Okay, welcome to our council meeting, the last of this year. Uh, this is uh, the 13th of December. Uh, this morning we start with apologies. Um, I understand Councillor Manderson will be apologising for an early departure, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I can call for a mover for that, please. Councillor Larson, seconder. I'll second it. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. That's it. Okay. So I'd like to welcome Ash Nair, who's online from Melbourne. Is that correct, Ash? Councillor Ash Nair. Anyone else up there? Okay. I believe Councillor Panera will be coming online at some point. Okay, let's have a confirmation for the agenda. Call for a mover, please. So Howard, seconder. Councillor Manderson. Mr Mayor, just to note, if I could, I want the confirmation that item 5.14, the LTP revenue and financing policy, I've withdrawn that from the, from the agenda uh, based on the, the conversation at the LTP briefing on Monday. Uh, there was an agreement to move forward with that targeted rate for Sportsville, which affects this policy. Drawing that, we'll bring it to the February Council meeting. Thank you very much. Just noting that. that was okay. Part of Motion the agenda. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Conflict of interest. Is there any declared conflicts of interest today? I have one somewhere, but I can't remember where. When it shows up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, can I have a mover for that, please? There's no need. Need a mover? Okay. Let's leave that. Okay, now we move on to the fun part. The um, public forum, we have a presentation to come before us from David Wheatley and Jess Costello from the Mangawai Harbour Surf Life Saving Club. Welcome. Morning, everybody. Morning. I hope you didn't fall off your surfboard. No, playing tennis. <laughs> the irony. No, I'm all right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So my name's Dave Wheatley. I'm a civil engineer and recent member of the surf club, and this is Jess Costello, long term. Um, in the knowledge of running off five minutes, I'm going to move pretty quickly through these slides. So, if you don't mind, just ask questions at the end. Oh, hand these out, David. Oh, I'll just do it again. Okay, so slip behind the surf club um, happened during the Auckland anniversary rainfall. About 10 metres wide, 30 metres down, and about 500 cubic metres of debris has been displaced. Had damage to the Māori heritage down here in the corner, including a Kauiwi surface. We've had moderate damage to the clubhouse, uh, likely non structural, mainly external type damage. Um, the area that this slip occurred was inside a recreational reserve. And in the red dotted line is the area of the recreational reserve that Mangafai Heads leases their land. It's just important to note that this slip has mobilised outside the leased area and materials come down into the leased area. So since the slip occurred, um, the surf club and the council have worked together. The area is deemed unsafe. So if you dig down to the beach, obviously the building has uh, been deemed unsafe and a fence been put around it. And in addition, you can just see here this walkway up to the very top. Um, this has been fenced off down the bottom where the uh, ice cream and coffee always is. The insurer of the building, so the building is insured under um, Surf Life Saving Northern Region. The um, undertaker came out and had a look at the uh, damage, basically deemed that not only no repairs are to be undertaken, but a full assessment can't be undertaken until the council looked after the slip bubble. So we continued, continued to try to do some hard work and looking for some solutions. So I took a um, survey route, surveyed the area, got the topography of the area, 
We engaged the independent geotech consultants, so Tonkin and Taylor um, came on site for a day and did an assessment for us of the solution. Teodio Howell was engaged in the early stages to understand the significance of this hillside, to find out where the historic items were and how we could work together to get a solution that was going to minimise further damage. I brought five slope stabilisation contractors on site to um, come up with a solution, a design and construct solution, and provide basically an outline of what that method was and a price to support that. Uh, three of them had priced the work and supplied with them supply prices. Um, so um, I'm the chairperson and LAC member at the Surf Club, so I've been around a long time there. And um, just wanted to reiterate some facts that's happened um, during almost a year since this has happened. Um, we have um, set up temporary facilities, um, which I'm really proud of the work that um, our Surf Club has done to get that um, just taken. We haven't lost, we've probably lost one hour of non-patrolling, even immediately after the slip. But because of the um, impediment of this over the last year, we have um, had situations where we have a reduced number, a reduced response time to first aid and rescues due to the issues that um, with the surf club, we cannot provide a good quality. Um, we can't provide good first aid. We can't provide good uh, rescue response times. Um, and also, we've noticed a drop in our numbers this year because um, relating to the issues at the surf club. So overall, what we're finding is that um, there is an increased risk of loss of life or serious injury due to the situation. Every day we don't repair the slip. We've got additional risk to further damage the Māori um, heritage of the site. We've already found middens all around the outside at the top here from the par site. And as I've been um, informed there are known and unknown further burial sites that can be affected by the slip. We're also continually getting more damage to the buildings. Every time we've got a rain event, I've been monitoring how much more rock has come down. It's not as substantial as the first slip that's occurred, but there is still further damage occurring on each additional large um, scale rain, rainfall event. The insurer is well aware that the degradation of the building and the additional damage which is happening due to an action. So when we continue to look for solutions, we knew that we didn't want to disturb more ground around the slip while we're doing the repair. We knew that we um, access paths or around these um, Maori heritage sites was going to be difficult, especially if the ones that weren't known. We wanted to minimise the movement of the material uh, that was there on site. We knew that there's a lot of erosion that's happening around the front of the beach, which is an ongoing cyclic issue. However, a lot of the material at the back of the surf club can be used at the front of the surf club um, to, to mitigate against that erosion. We didn't want to damage any more of these beautiful big native trees up here, especially the Bahutukawa. We wanted the solution to be natural looking. Most of all, we wanted a practical long-term industry standard solution that was going to be maintainable. So a couple of typical solutions from the industry, a full um, shop grid face transmission gully, um, a catch fence, which is basically saying the slip will continue to move, but we're going to catch the debris at the bottom and protect the building. So we looked at that solution that's down the west coast of South Island. And then this final one here, which is a drape mesh and a rock bolt solution, which is basically <laughs> netting over the top of the rock face held back with a series of long pins that are more sort of rock behind. Another question I keep getting asked during this process was, why don't we just abandon the old surf club, build a new one on the lower, lower car park? And the simple fact is that you cannot safety, safely, practically and economically demolish the old surf club without repairing the slip. Okay. There are some means of doing it, which are very risky, but they are in the end a lot more cost, a lot more cost associated with them, and you end up with a huge amount of debris to deal with that. And a total end up, a total, end, uh, a total cost greater than just 
repairing the slot and doing the repairs to the facility. So independent geotech advice came in. Um, first one there was very unlikely to happen behind the surf club. Only happens one every hundred years or so, that type of failure. They recommended that we get cracking and, and, and start solving this problem and get a solution together as fast as possible, or else it will continue to, to, um, to fret away and have further damage. Big one down the bottom there. Um, if we don't do something about this shortly, additional material will be mobilised, resulting in more suspected damage to the surf club and the historic sites. And if you continue to let that happen, it's going to get more and more difficult to So the construction industry, independent geotech and Tonkin and Taylor and Tudio Howe have agreed on a preferred, a preferred repair solution, which is what we're sort of seeing here in the background, which is this drape mesh and rock bolt solution, abseil from the top on the way down. To form that opinion, we've got a letter of support from Tudio Howe for that solution. We've got Tonkin and Taylor's report, and we've got prices from the construction industry. So the solution involves clearing at-risk trees up here at the very top, working from the top down with abseil gear, placing the um, drapery mesh down the face, rock bolting into the, into the competent rock below, pulling out the debris that's up against the building, taking out around the front of the surf club. Once it's at the stage where the insurance for the building can come back and assess the building, and the repair to the building is undertaken under the insurer for the insurance for the building. Just looking at that in a cross-section profile, so this is our building here, down here is our beach, is our hillside. So we've got our slip material sitting up against the building here in the green. So a big long mesh down the face, pins and pins further through the face to um, hold back further failure. And utilising a lot of these suitable rocks, so there's a lot of um, timber and vegetation here that has to go to tip, but there's a lot of suitable rocks here that can be placed in front of the surf club, as I mentioned earlier. $1.9 million capex and an operation increase of about two to $5,000, basically on maintaining this system. You've got a lot of exposure to the salt air out there. You've got a lot of bolts that you have to maintain, tighten up, make sure everything's suitable and inspecting it usually a couple of times in the first year and then gradually goes on to every five years after that. The solution is a 100-year solution. There's some parts of materials that will only be a 40 to 50 year because of the environment, but the solution that we're trying to put forward to you today is a 100-year solution so the surf club can stay there. Time frame for construction is a year from signing of the DNC contract to completion, and we're wanting to consent and procure that under the emergency provisions. Questions? Questions? Councillor I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, Ash. I'll bring you in next up to Councillor Larson. Thank, thank, thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Could you just clarify a bit more around how you see the work being funded and what you think the cost may end up landing in? Well, I've outlined the cost of $1.9 million for yeah. repair. Yeah. As far as funding goes, I'm just working for Mungify Heads. Yes. I have no idea about what funding is available in the community or what funding is available in your budget. I'm just here to present the facts and the right. Thank you. Councillor so Nair. Thank you, um, David. Thank you. And uh, good to know that you're an engineer as well. Uh, I am just an observer. I've been to many mountains, have slips around, landslide in Nepal, India, whatnot. Uh, so my question is going to be very basic. Um, why don't why don't we look at the base, which is unstable, keep slipping, and we doing the patchwork? I actually sent the question through chat. Um, ten million now, ten million later. Why don't you have those netting being planted with vegetation, wild or whatever? So we don't have to do it for another hundred years. I don't understand why we keep fixing the top and not looking at the bottom. Thank you. Sorry. So we haven't fixed the top to date. So this is the first time we'll be fixing the top. And as part of a drape mesh solution, there is revegetation that goes in with it. So there's a vegetation matting that goes underneath the galvanized drape mesh, and there is some planting to be undertaken at the top. 
The mode of failure is not due to a lack of vegetation. Vegetation was there in the first place. Vegetation is not the um, biggest mitigation factor for further slips occurring. This is an igneous rock. It is the way that it's cooled as it's come out of the vents below and the way the orientation of the failure planes mean that it's likely to continue to fail. As you can see in other failures around the Maofai area, it's just the way that it's bedded and the way that cracks are embedded into the lava that's come out. So by pinning the uh, exposed rock columns back into the ones behind, you're stopping, so you're stopping the fact that it will topple over itself continually years after years. So like the geotech showed, this has only happened about once every 100 or 200 years. You can see other similar failures around the cliffs as you go to the north. It's very unlucky this has happened in front of the surf club. But yes, vegetation is important and it is part of the solution to getting a long-term solution in the end. Thank you, David. Okay. Thank you, David and, and Jess. Oh, Councillor Howard. Can I? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you uh, for the presentation. Very good. Um, not, not that I would be in favour of, of moving or, or getting rid of the uh, supply of car parks that are already in very limited supply up there. Uh, I'm interested in what you say about you can't do anything about moving or repairing the building until it's, you know, the, the hill is, is stabilised and presumably some of the rock is cleared. Um, but that does lead to a question of accessibility to do anything, which I would think is still got to be done either way. And um, you, I'm presuming that you won't actually go clearing the rubble till you get the stabilisation of the hill in place. Is that, is, is that yeah, so to answer your first question, I didn't say you cannot do it. I said you cannot economically and practically demolish the existing building without repairing the slip. There are no. things that do demolition under extremely dangerous circumstances, but okay. it's both more costly and not in line with what I expect anyone in this room to want to take those kind of risks. So second of all, to repair a slip like this, you work from the top down. So materials are brought in from a helicopter up to the very top platform, as sailing trained people work from the very top, they tie themselves to the trees at the very top, they put in hungry anchors at the very top and they start abseiling their way yeah. down the face. And as they're doing that, they're clearing the debris as they come down and they're pulling out mesh on their way down and then start installing rock bolts so that everything above them is safe. Things can fail down below them, but they're on their ropes and they're tied above. As they come down to a point which is around about 10 metres above the existing clubhouse, it is then safe for an excavator, so in a cab, a rocks cab with full protection and rock wall protection to sit in below and start clearing the debris. Because the very last of the face to be um, drilled and meshed is behind the muck pole, yep. on the debris pole. So you do have to pull that out and, and then pin that last piece down there. Okay, thank you. That's from Anderson. Uh, thank you, Ron. Is there uh, any liability on the adjacent property owner from which the content has slipped to keep at home what he owns? I didn't understand your question, sir. Sorry. Is there any liability on the adjacent property owner to keep his property at home? Council Blaine. Yeah, well, if Council's liable, that they're liable. I haven't looked at any of the adjacent properties. The recreational reserve is very large. I've only looked at the recreational reserve and one lease in the middle of it, which is to the surf club. I do not know anything about the adjacent property owners on the outside of that recreational reserve. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Lambeth. Um, <clears throat> your insurance for the, the, the surf complex. Um, I take it they've not committed either way until that rock face is cleared, what they're going to do. But you're talking about a, well, one of the proposals, one of the investigations was a new surf club. Will ins the insurance cover the construction cost of that? No? Okay. Because so the insurer sees this, yes. the insurer is very experienced 
in the amounts of these other things happening around the country, the insurer knows that this to standard practices and the insurer knows is an action happening. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, just to, to be clear about things, I've, I'm getting a handle on it. And the reason why you talk about one in 100 year return period, it's that um, there's a weathering process going on to the igneous um, rock. And so, which means that the rock, which is most exposed to the weather, gets weakened in time. And then there was a traumatic event which triggered this um, happening. But um, that's the rock in behind it, it's still sound. And that's the bit that you would be um, plugging into to, to retain the, the surface and, and provide a protective. Uh, so I've got an understanding of that, and I guess I'd love to have an understanding of how we solve the problem financially. And um, you know, I guess I might need to be talking to our insurers too. Thank you. Any further question, Councillor Wilson Collins? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much for your presentation. It's a huge amount of work that has gone into um, the research and, and finding the right solutions. I'm just interested to know what has the role of council been so far? Have you been working with council staff or have you done this? Yes, I've been working mainly with Lara Stott on a right. day-by-day basis, organising these inspections and decisions together. Um, I then came to site and gave some really, really good guidance as well, so that was really appreciated. And recently, Helen's been working with me. Awesome. So, so, so we're specifically talking about now we need to find the money. Is that that's what we're here for? Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you. And and yeah, I'm just I've learned so much this morning. I appreciate it. Any further questions? Yeah, just got one. That's all, members. EQC. Are they involved? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'll leave that over to your friends. So, we'll bring a briefing paper with you to share that while we Okay, thank you. Thank you, David and Jesse. That was a really good presentation. Would you be able to supply that to elected members and an email? As email? Or yeah. Email, I think it would be great. Email, please. Oh, sorry, sorry. Some people like that. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we move on to the motion of the open minutes. Can I have a mover for that? I'll move that. I have a second that. And so, Howard, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. So, we move on to item 4.1. The um, Reconsideration and estimation to Council Council's emissions accounting contract and climate policy. Oh, thank you, Colonel uh, um, I have emailed through the Alana motion on the screen for us. And as well, you can't see it, I'll read it out. It says that quite the district council A notes that it has agreed to consult on the climate smart program as part of the 2020-2027 long-term plan. And B notes that it has reconsidered the decision made on the 27th of September. Read as follows that the Quattro District Council. A request that the Chief Executive Council to Council the Mission Accounting Contract and Stock Development of Cyprus Climate Policy and B note that this will reduce cost to the rate payer of approximately $33,000 according to the external budgets. And back to the today's motion, C. Reconfirms the above decision of 
27 September 2023. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll second that motion. Um, motion Maris, to you. Um, Mr. Mayor, no, I don't have much to say here. This is a notice of motion, a reconsideration of an, of an elected member notice of motion. Um, uh, the legal advice is provided in uh, a, the PEX agenda for uh, elected members to note. Uh, the report is fairly, all the reports from staff does is provide additional information to inform your decision. Uh, and that's um, that's what's been provided for you today to, to look at. Uh, and I'll hand over to, um, I think, Mr. Mayor, the, the mover to, to start the, the conversation. Okay. Understood. Move a statement. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, this is just an item that's come back to us um, on the recommendation of Council Staff. We the report. On page 33 of the agenda. There is an option to which is effectively what I'm Moving here, this is part A of option two. Option one is uh, showing to have um, both, both advantages and a, a range of disadvantages, whereas option two, either part A or part B of that option, has a, advantages and no anticipated disadvantages. So, um, kind of procedural in, in some respects. I think having re looked at this, I think it's appropriate that um, we do um, reconfirm the decision, having reconsidered the further information that's been provided. Okay, Mr. Second, uh, I'd like to endorse that that we reconfirm the decision. Any other elected members wish to speak? Councillor Vincent, Councillor. There are Muslim Collins and then Councillor Nair. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one thing I note is that the um, redrafted uh, notice of motion refers only to consulting on the um, Climate Smart Program and makes no reference to the um, monitoring uh, contract. And um, this is a bit of a disappointment for me. Um, it might be a voice in the wilderness, I don't know. But however, um, I think that, um, as rightly pointed out by Councillor Williams at the last meeting when we considered this, um, we've been getting these reports on our um, uh, volumes of emissions and the, their source and done, done nothing with it. And as far as I'm concerned, my, from my perspective, I would like us to be a council known as one which um, feeds more lightly on the face of the planet and also finds creative ways of saving money or even garnering extra income while it does so. And um, there's the old saying, you can't manage what you don't measure. And uh, well, we were doing some measuring, but we weren't doing any managing. And this is something that's, well, I think, um, could say more that. But however, with this um, notice of motion, we've also kicked the ball out of the park so that we can't actually play with it anymore. And um, I really think that we should reinstate um, our emissions measurement and then um, actually exercise some brain power collectively around the table and also with our staff supporting organisation to see if that triggers opportunities for us to um, either save money or actually uh, create extra income out of the areas where there are emissions, which could be maybe channeled or um, changed in some way, such and I think our biggest emissions come from our sewage schemes. So is there some way of harvesting those um, gases which are emitted from that process? and uh, turn to, to other use, for instance. Um, so that is my disappointment with this motion. And um, I think that our, our better course amongst the options is to also, um, if we see in the staff report, um, 
uh, the second part of option two is to recommence the contract with carbon EEs and the development of the climate smart policy in my preference. Thank you. Also, um, in most economies, followed by Ashnail, followed by Councillor Williams. Thank you. Um, I I actually don't understand how we can reconsider the decision. Um, I don't feel that there is a lot of information provided in this report that allows us to actually look at the pros and cons of the options. Um, one of the criticisms of the original decision was that we weren't provided with information to make a decision, and I don't see any difference really um, this morning. I, I would have thought that the motion today would be to ask for a robust uh, report from staff as to the implications to what this decision might be. Um, I appreciate the legal advice that was given, but to me, that's only one part of the excuse me. That's only one part of the puzzle. That legal advice is is only um, in reference to the letter that we received from Lawyers for Climate Action. That legal advice doesn't actually tell us what the implications of the actual decision making would be. So I'm I'm not um, I'm not in favour of the motion at all. I'm not going to bother moving an amendment because I, I have no success on um, getting that through. And I'm sure um, final meeting of the year, we're probably tired of um, going round and round in circles around the table. So I'll clearly read the room and, um, and, not, and not progress with, with that option. But obviously, not, not in agreement um, and not impressed. Thank you, Councillor Ashnay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not impressed as well um, for different reasons, though. Um, I am very disappointed that our council um, goes back for seeking legal advice at drop of a coin. And I don't think it is the beginning or the end of that legal advice. So I wonder how many times this motion will be presented if the climate action lawyers who have all the time and the money to um, keep suing us and the solution given by staff will be to reconsider the motion. So aren't we then better off just going ahead and uh, uh, not approving it and $33,000 saving will be frittered away in legal actions. Um, so that's probably the reason I will be voting um, against the motion, uh, which I had voted in favor, because I think we are dealing with a system which is broken, which is based more on legal advice, and the legal advice is never definitive. Um, I, I doubt very much that this is the end of this. So I, I don't want to do anything uh, with um, the approval uh, because it's not the end. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Thank you, through the chair. Um, further on from from the point of the wastewater emissions that I pointed out at the previous meeting. I think the other thing that we need to consider is, is that these emissions will come under the affordable waters from June 2024. So um, that portion of the emissions would not be under council under its water. Um, so that, that's one thing to consider, um, as that was a large portion of where our emissions came from. And the other point is, is that um, we have said through the LTP we are going to consult, reconsult on uh, the climate policy program. Um, so I'm I am in favour of this motion. I don't think we should be back and reinstating our uh, contracts with Carbonese. Thank you. Thank you. Any other elected members wish to speak? Three, four, three. Yes. Oh, okay, Councillor Paniora, you've got your hand up here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Yes, through the chair, the reasons why I would vote against the motion are similar to the reasons that I gave for the previous decisions. I'm also disappointed that this has come back yet again 
um, and we've yet again spent further um, legal further money on legal advice um, for this. Um, I think that this is just the council now trying to um, add the reasons for the original decision um, so that there's less um, challengeable grounds um, for a judicial review. Um, that's not really the way that we should be doing things anyway. We should be providing the reasons for and the justification for um, the original decisions that we make. Just one point that I want to touch on is around the, um, you know, the facade that we keep on talking about uh, where we've paused the, paused the scheme, um, which in essence has the same effect as cancelling it, um, to go out for consultation to see what the community wants or the community's views. The community came to us at that previous, at the last council meeting and told us our, their views. They provided us with a petition of nearly 100 signatories. I mean, if that's not enough for us to gauge what the, um, what our ratepayers and the community's uh, views are on it, then I don't know what is. Um, it's that, you know, they've, they've done all of the, the, the groundwork for us and they've come to us and said, this is what we want. Um, so we've ignored that, you know, and, and unfortunately the decision's been made to cancel it. And we just need to wear it um, and, and in, in agreement with Councillor Nia, this isn't going to be the end of this, um, unfortunately for us. Thank you. Those are my thoughts. Thank you, Councillor Paniora. Any further comments, statements? Okay, Councillor Larson, you have the right of reply as the mover. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I mean, I reflect on a few things that have been said around the table. and In particular, we are going out consulting on the Climate Smart Program and the LTPs, and uh, any and all ratepayers can make submissions in relation to that, including climate accounting or not climate accounting or whatever they so choose, and they'll be reconsidered through that process and, and of hearings and deliberations. Uh, if further information can't, came to us that uh, needed to be considered, well, we can also consider any new information at that time. I don't agree that there's no council to consider in terms of um, that matter, though. I mean, in a, in a council of 150 people, in a district of 18,000 odd ratepayers, in, in a country of 5 billion people, in a world of 7.8 billion, uh, when uh, human carbon dioxide emissions um, account for 3.6 percent of global emissions and uh, 96 plus percent of those emissions are from other sources that are uncontrollable. If you do a little bit of maths, anything that uh, Kuiper does in terms of counting things or not counting things or increasing things or reducing things is inconsequential. So it's uh, as far as I need to go with that, I think you, uh, your worship. Thank you. Okay, we'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, so I raise a hand. Aye. Aye. Against? Against. Against. Ask for a division, please. Yeah, Carry. Uh, absolutely. Councilor Howard. Four. Councilor Lambert. Four. Councilor Lambert. Four. Councilor Lambert. Four. Councilor Larson. Four. Councilor Manderson. Four. Councilor Nair. Against. Councillor Paniora. Against. Councillor Vincent. Against. Councillor Williams. For. Councillor Wilson Collins. Against. Mayor Jepson. For. In carriage. Carried. Okay. We'll move to the next agenda item, which is 5.1. Mapapai Community Park must add an adoption for public consultation. Um, if I may, Mr. Mayor, may I? May move um, an amendment to the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, so what you're doing, you're not making an amendment. It sounds like you're moving a motion. Motion, yep. So an alternative motion to that, what's provided in the agenda. Is that fair to say? Alternative motion. Do we have? And um, I think that we'll, we'll have, it, have it come up. I can 
written there. there. Um, point A, as you have, remains. Um, and instead of point B, as it exists, and point C, I would add, refers the draft Mangafai Community Park Master Plan back to the Mangafai Community Park Governance Committee for further consideration. Um, uh, if I may explain. Through you, Mr. Mayor, oh. is that the entire motion? That's the two points. Okay, um, Mr. Mayor, you'll need to get a seconder for that motion. Uh, a second, mate. That's what I asked for a second. Sorry about my phone going off. That's right. I'm silent. So, so um, the, the point here is that I fully accept that there has been consultation on on through through friends and 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 the government's group in the past on this. We're looking way into the future, and in recent times, we've had the discussions now about uh, a civic building there in the park. We talked about the museum and things like that, and there is going to there's been a submission put forward through the LTP to consider uh, amending the reserve management plan for the Mangafai Community Park to allow for limited. Um, commercial activities. So that's on the table looking forward. Now, um, it's a dynamic situation uh, looking to the future. I think that it's, it's not to say that the essence of what has been provided in the plan isn't agreed. It is it's just this one point um, to, to bring back quickly to the governance group, discuss that and, and bring it back for approval to the, to the council. Okay, um, so thanks for how it's made a statement virtually here. He's introduced the, the motion, Mr. Mayor. Um, so you, we, do we hear from the staff? Uh, I think it would be a good opportunity for the staff to, to respond to that and answer any questions that elected members may have. Okay, and then we'll carry through. Okay. So um, do we have the staff, please? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Presenting the statement. So, Jenny Rooney is going to do that on his behalf. Good, everyone. Um, yes, on behalf of Mark, I'm um, producing this report. Um, so, we have worked to date with the master plan review. We've had an online survey of 100, um, 100 submissions have come back, which have um, contributed to the report. We've also had um, two meetings with the Friends Group and also a workshop with the Friends Group and then presented to Governance Committee and also um, given them the opportunity to um, respond prior to the meeting so we could make amendments and then made amendments afterwards. The, the draft that we have now before us is the draft that through all of that consultation. Um, what we were proposing today was to um, having it adopted and going out for public consultation from the 19th of December until the 19th of February, at which time we would come back and um, make any amendments with any of the submissions. We were also asking that um, the elected members here today appoint the Mangafai Community Park Governance Committee as the panel who would support staff in, in the recommendations with the submissions, coming back to you for a final document. I take it that it's read, and I'm open for any questions that anybody would like to. Uh, no, any questions of um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My my hand, I I don't even sure it's raised or not. Uh, but um, yeah, I've got two questions. Uh, one, obviously, the consultation period you are choosing is the period when uh, I think it's school holidays. Um, I think you'll be more caring about your children than. Um, the consultation documents and all. Um, and secondly, um, in the report, there is a mention of uh, lower um, the club area, the wetland, which can be used for stormwater um, and all. Uh, is it part of the consultation as well? Uh, are people open to all those things happening? Thank you. Are you there? Yes. Firstly, with the consultation period, um, it was really purposely chosen for that reason because we've got a lot of people who come here with batches 
um, that use the park, also a lot of people that come as visitors. It's a destination point for Mangafai. So the period was um, discussed and, and we thought we could capture a huge amount of users by being able to have that period available. So staff are actually coming back early and making themselves available for that consultation with the public. Um, and secondly, in terms of the stormwater, are you meaning the remediation stormwater, Councillor Mayor? No, I'm talking, if you look at the report, uh, there is um, a low, it is to do with, if, uh, shall I give you the page number or something? Um, all, all it mentioned is about uh, lower the manga white manga fight club you, you know that where the golf club and manga fight club is the area below that is considered as wetland and possible stormwater discharge right so as i'm saying uh, asking you is when you go for public consultation are you telling them the whole cards or you're keeping some of the options to your chest that's what i'm asking thank you sure i don't you uh, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, the, what we are consulting on is what's in the document. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so in the document, there is, um, uh, I mean, uh, there is mention of this wetland. So that's what I'm trying to ask. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Right. Okay. Further questions, Aaron Wilson Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just curious. So you've been through quite a robust um, consultation already, including the Manawatu Community Park Governance Committee, so we've all had an opportunity to input into this document. So. What would um, what would the effect be to send the document back to the committee if they've already put it forward to us? Because well, because we want to go go out to actual public consultation now, which is yeah. the next stage. Yeah. So coming back through the committee just as a as a formal terms of reference, so the governance committee know what what's been put into the final draft prior to us coming back to elected members for a doctor. So, yeah. for you, for you, um, Mr. Chair, so the material effect of the motion that's been put forward will, would then uh, allow the governance committee to, to review uh, information in that. Oh, I appreciate it's already been through then, um, but it would, it would, in this essence, delay that further consultation. So, so, so yeah. further question Has this document changed since they last reviewed it on the 23rd of November? No. Sorry. Um, oh, have, if, if I may, uh, Mr. Smith. No, absolutely right. And in essence, there is nothing at all wrong with the document, except, and, and it's not the document, it is the fact that there has been a submission made in as part of the LTP to consider amending the Reserve Management Plan Act to consider limited commercial activity. Now, it's on the back of talk on, on, on the plans for the civics centre in there, museum, etc., and saying, actually, the principle has always been no overt commercial activity. Yeah, yeah there is commercial activity in there. So what's now, with the submission that's been made for the LTP, to do that, to put that in the LTP, is going to be totally in conflict to the master plan. And so, so I mean, I would propose part of this is that we hold an emergency, I don't want to call it an emergency meeting, but a, a, a fast meeting of the governance group to review this, uh, this element and, and minimise any delay. Right, so I have two follow-up questions, if I can. don't know who needs to ask them, whether it's Councillor Howard or the staff. The first one is, when did the submission come through for the LTP? Was that before? It's all been just been part of the submission. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, this is only... And since the 23rd of November? Yes, yeah, since the 23rd of November. So, so if that's a public submission that's come in, it, can that not be included as, the, as part of the public consultation that we're going to hold? So therefore, the process could still continue um, include that submission as part of that public consultation because you'll still it'll still need the Mangapai Community Park Governance Committee will be part of that hearing panel and will still get that information and be able to incorporate that in the process. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the 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 one consideration is that it specifically says in the plan, the master plan. 
that no commercial activity. I haven't got the line right in front of me. Yes, but this is a plan going out for public consultation. It's not set in stone. And if, if you've already received a submission from the public, even though it's through the LTP, it can still be included as a public submission on this document and can still be incorporated. Like, so the, so what, what you're trying to achieve, and I understand what you're, what, what, you're, what you're wanting to do now, you want that to be considered, but it can be considered as part of the process that has already been laid out. That's what I said. Thank you, Your Worship. Might I suggest that we're going to have a debate? Have the debate. Yep. Yeah, this is um, let's complete the questions and then have the debate. That's what you're saying here. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I have a question. It's, it is a question and it is in the same territory, though, because um, I'm just wondering uh, what impact it's going to have in delaying the formal consultation process. And whether we're going to run into uh, um, some confusion with the long term plan consultation process, which would be concerning if we were, the two things were happening at once, and this, say, got lost um, because of the welter of information coming out about the long term plan, say. So I just, I'm interested in timelines. Um, now, and I'm not too sure who, like, because I think from what Councillor, my, my question might be to Councillor Howard, if, if he anticipates, what you're saying is that in effect, it, the consultation process couldn't start until the plan comes back to the Council for formal endorsement for consultation, which takes us through into February to start us. Is that right? Uh, um, through the Mayor, um, that, would be, that would be correct, unless we, a, hold an early meeting of the governance group to consider this. Um, I'm assuming that. Yeah, and, and, and to minimise any effect, which I'd hate, you know, I don't really want to do, but uh, minimise any effect on that, on the consultation program, because the consultation on the master plan um, is going to happen way earlier than the consultation on the LTP. Well, I'm just wondering. And we might get questions through the staff. We would have Thank to back again. Sorry, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Maybe if um, you could ask Jason just in terms of the LTP consultation period starting. So, through you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. So, the LTP consultation period is in March. Um, so, we're anticipating bringing uh, that documentation back to you at the February briefing on the financials or that sort of can the consultation document questions again, that sort of stuff. And then, uh, it's assuming uh, council approval in February, we'll be uh, consulting with the public in March. Um, I, I'm not sure when, uh, if I can ask uh, Jenny here, when we're considering consulting on this uh, community master plan. So, the master plan was we were going to be consulting on that through December, 19th of December till the 19th of February. And then um, considering any of the submissions in March and bringing it back um, no later than February, uh, no later than May to council. So effectively, the consultation to answer your question, Councillor Vincent, through you, Mr. Mayor, the consultation is timed currently to be prior to the LTP consultation. Yes, but isn't the, the recommendation or the, the motion that we um, put this back to the governance committee, which then has to put the finalised plan back to us for formal endorsement? Be our February meeting be around about the 25th of February, and the consultation couldn't start till after then. So, if that was the scenario three, Mr. Mayor, sorry, um, then then we would be consulting at the same time, and we would include it as part of the LTP and concurrently with the LTP consultation. So could it be included with the LTP then to avoid confusion rather than running alongside? Is well, we would be just to be very clear, careful. It's not a part of the LTP. No, no it was. But if it's run in consultation at the same time, we would make sure that we could do. That. Okay. That was so that's I'm just. What, what, is that what the intention was? Well, the, the, the intention always was is that they were separate consultations. Um, I've raised this this matter because I see a potential conflict. That, that's that's simple simple matter of it. Um, you know, if if um, if we and and and, and uh, we, we may consider. Um, Excuse me, Mike. Can, can we go that back? To, we'll finish with, with questions, and then we'll have your staff. Okay. Any further questions, of staff? Okay. So staff can stand down.
So I'll cut. Which is what you'd like. My, uh, Thank you. Right. Sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. Apologies. Uh, Councillor Hammond has had his mover statement already, so you might want to move to the second statement. Uh, okay. Second statement. Then. So the last one. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I think that uh, Councillor Howard has raised a very appropriate point here. And uh, I think that the questions that we've heard have actually, although they dragged on for a lot longer than I would have liked, they have actually flushed out quite a good answer. Thank you, Councillor Vincent, that we can, in fact, align both of the accesses, not have a duplicated consultation, and we can run them both in parallel. Um, let's get it right, have everything lined up. I think it's going to be a good way of running it. Thank you. Other elected members wish to speak? Councillor Aaron. I am. Thank you. Um, I, I, I appreciate um, the effect that this motion is trying to have, but I, it, it boggles my mind why we are suggesting over one submission that we hold up the entire process, um, the consultation. That it's been, <clears throat> it's been explained by staff that that, that that submission that we've received can be included as part of the public consultation. And while, and whilst the, the current draft says one thing, it is completely within the realm of public consultation to listen to, to, to take in um, the considerations and to make amendments to the actual final plan that, that is actually adopted. This is only a draft to go out to consultation. Um, I, think, I think there's been a lot of work done by staff here. Um, I think we're at, a pro we're at the point of a process where we can push it forward out for public consultation. We've got an amazing opportunity to capture the visitors that are coming over summer who are using the park um, as well as as well as locals. It's an absolute opportunity to capture the demographic. Pushing the consultation out further would lose that opportunity because we'd be moving into the um, colder months and the winter months and probably not be able to capture those those same visitors. Um, I yeah, I guess I'm just confused still as to why we would hold up the entire process and go back through um, back through the committee now when that part of it can be done at the end of the public consultation and still include the information that you've since received since the 23rd of November. Um, processes are there for a reason. There's a huge body of work that we're always moving forward with. And I think it's inappropriate to, to repeat a step in the process um, when you have the opportunity to reach the same conclusion anyway by following this process so that staff can actually then move on to the next body of work that they're waiting to do as well. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, I'm a bit confused because I lost the link um, for some time, uh, but I think um, with the new council, um, I mean, it's, I mean, I always take um, a second wave of thought when you talk about processes. Uh, now you have a fresh council, and maybe it's an opportunity, rightly pointed or raised by uh, Councillor Howard, to go back and, and see, look at those. Um, uh, after consulting options and see maybe there are room for improvement. So I'm okay with um, um, delaying it a little bit um, to get more information out. Thank you. Any other elected members wish to speak? Okay, Councillor Howard, you have the movers right to reply. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and let me first start by apologising to the, the staff and team because there's been you know, a lot of work and there has been good consultation in this um, and this has only arisen um, simply trying to understand or put in place elements that have come up through the LTP plan um, and, 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 and that consultation and we, we have a line in, in, in the under the future uh, on page 11 of the uh, draft master plan that starts purely commercial activity, activities will not be permitted to establish permanently within the park. Um, so that is a clear uh, mandate, I guess is the word, um, going out to those who have consultation for us to 
um, then go out in the LTP, uh, and, and I might not understand the processes all that well, but if for us to go out in the LTP with uh, a, a, an application or consideration for uh, commercial, uh, limited commercial activity within the park would seem to be in conflict. Now, if we could easily change that line um, in the master draft master plan, because it is a draft master plan, um, and uh, council can, as I understand it, could decide to change the, that with simply one or two words. It might say purely um, or limited commercial activities may be considered. Um, if, if we were in agreement with that, um, then the way is clear to go ahead with uh, consultation as, as has been uh, planned by staff and, and with a lot of work done. So, um, you know, I'm happy to submit uh, that alternative, but there is a timeline that has happened with this and it has been fleshed out by uh, the developments through the LTP. And I thought it only right that uh, I brought this to the attention of council. Thank you. So go to the vote. All those in favour, say so aye. Against. Against. Um, I vote recorder, please. Carried. So I'm going to have one more item before we have a break for a cup of tea because my throat is dry. Um, so we're going to the next item, item 5.2. Can I remove it for that, please? Thank you. Councillor Larson seconded. Councillor Williams. Okay, we have um, Lisa Salter. Yep. Welcome, Lisa and Ailey. Through the chair. Good morning. Um, I'll take the report as read and I'll give you a little statement. I do have one question and then I'll take further questions. That's all right. I'm pleased to be presenting a further report following the direction given in the November briefing proposing that paid staff at Mungified Library. Establishing a branch library with paid professional staff in the existing library space will go a long way to improving library services in the Mungify community. The volunteers have worked tirelessly in the library as the population has continued to grow. We can no longer expect volunteers to work with the volume and complexity of providing a modern library service, including digital service support, programs and events, graphic design, and collection and development. We do envision working with the current volunteers on a plan that will meet their needs to support the library. Feedback from the Mungify community is that Council should be equitably funding the library as it does in Dogball. We are seeking a decision on whether to proceed with this concept and if so, when. I do have one question from Councillor Howard. Oh, I haven't seen that one, sorry. Uh, so the question is, previously we were told the main library, Dogville, had a district-wide responsibility to service the outlying libraries. This would continue, but not include the Mungify Library once that entity moved to having some paid staff. I seem to recall Mungify staff might be required to help service the likes of Kaiwaka. If this is the case, is it envisioned that there might be a small adjustment to staff requirements at Dogville as a result of the Mungify staffing? Good questions, thank you. Um, so Dogville staff will continue to support Mungify Library as we do the other community libraries. Mungify Library would be established as a branch library with staff focusing on front of house customer service and maintaining the space in the collection. For economy of scale, we do not plan to duplicate uh, the management of a region-wide 
library services. Dargaval will provide a consistent standard at Kuiper Library level to maintain, focus on collection development, graphic design, social media, program and event coordination, and digital services. Dargaval staff will provide training to the new Mangafai staff and the branch with the support of the they currently receive. While that may put pressure on the Dargaval team in the short ter term, it will pay off once the new team is on their feet, providing full services in the East. I do believe that it was mentioned at the last council meeting that this concept could extend to help the service in Kaiwaka. While that is not in the planning and Kaiwaka is well able to manage their current volume of work, there could be potential if the need arise. Um, those are additional questions from uh, Councillor Vincent uh, around um, the fact that this paper also requests to include funding in the long term plan and um, questioned about uh, consultation. Um, so we have consulted um, on the Mangapai Library through previous long term plans in regards to the hub, and we also consulted on the library strategy. So we don't feel that we need any further consultation. Um, so we're not uh, creating further consultation questions around the Mungabai specifically. The consultation questions for Mungabai will be around the hub, the hub's location and the design principles and the services that are provided by the hub. Um, this is specifically around um, staffing the hub in the second half of this financial year and then going forward into the future. Thank you. That does affect how I'd be voting on this. Councillor Naya. If a question, Councillor Nye. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't know who's going to answer the question. It could be staff um, or it could be uh, one of you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'm unclear. So th this is in part of LTP. What we are proposing here is a hundred fifty thousand uh, starting from July twenty four. Um, so the, my question is twofold. One is. Uh, is has it already been approved under LTP or is it still un, under the draft and why we are doing it too soon? Heavens won't fall if we do it in 2025. That's the first question. Um, can you answer that, please? Um, maybe you no, can answer. Yeah. See you, Maris. Did you step in here? Uh, I can, I'm happy to answer. Um, so, sorry. we're so basically we've, we've come to you because there's a, been a demand and a request from um, volunteers to help support um, managing the workload in Mangalpai. So, we would like to bring staff in. We've brought this to you before the long term plan briefings because of that request um, and the um, budgeted spend um, that we would be putting towards staff and ETE in this financial year to get that up and running. Um, we are asking to um, have these uh, uh, costs included as part of the long-term plan, as part of this paper for consistency, because we want to be able to see um, staff going in for six months and then knowing that they'll be there into the future and into the Mangalpai Hub and not coming back. Uh, I'm still asking um, and hiring staff with uncertainty. Thank you. And second question, uh, which uh, was a part of uh, the volunteer, uh, you can't get volunteer. I think I did ask it in the last meeting or briefing as well. Um, can you provide us, the elected members, the efforts, have you, in terms of what advertisement you put in the local paper, Manga 5 Focus, for seeking volunteers or things like that, some snapshot or executive summary of one paragraph the efforts you made, because I fail to believe that you can't find volunteer in a very educated um, um, society where a lot of people are old and they're um, looking like they're unwilling to help. So I'm very confused on that. So if you can provide some information on the efforts you made so far, that'll be awesome. Thank you. Sure, Councillor. No. So just to be clear, um, this issue hasn't arised because of our lack of volunteers. Um, we are very, very fortunate to live in a district where we have a lot of people that are willing to put forward their, um, their time and their skills um, for no cost. Um, so we do have volunteers that are available. The concern with the Mangapai Library in particular is the workload and the demand um, and customer demand specifically that is being pushed on to Mangapai, um, which is not comparable to the rest of our community hubs, which are run by volunteers. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins, followed by Councillor Lambeth. Um, my question actually relates to the motion because I've noted I've just noticed in the recommendation um, the long term plan is being referred to as the 2024-34 long term plan. 
I'm only doing a three year. Oh, no, it's supposed to build template. Yeah, so it's just a typo. So I just want to check what's in the motion. So three years, Mayor. Look, if you, yeah, but technically, you you know, the ten year long term plan is no longer for us. It's a three year long term plan. If uh, if Council Lars and Council Williams, if you're happy with us to just to tweak that to twenty four twenty seven to get it technically correct, just to avoid any ambiguity yeah, yeah, at three years time. Yeah, that's fine. Councillor you're good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilson Collins, for pointing that out. Councillor Lambert. Yes, um, through the mayor. Thank you. I've just got a few questions about this budget. Okay. Um, we've got staffing team leader, part time staff, times two, casual cover, um, and, and the current situation. And if you put a figure in there of $50,000, and I realise there's two, but then there's 150 at the end. Is that for three staff? No, the 50 is the operational budget. So 150,000 would pay for the team leave uh, and two part time staff um, and any casual. Uh, the 50,000 is operational costs, so that'll pay for um, e e all the operational costs for the library, power bills, paper, the books, electricity, the mm -hmm. Wi Fi, the laundry. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. I thought it was just on staff there. Now, I, I see there's quite a few things that have taken from the Dargle budget and put it on, on this. Are we expecting to see a decrease in the Dargle operating budget because of this? No. And this is actually taken from Dargle, then it's an add on. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah the cost around Dargle is the cost around Dargle. This is additional cost around Dargle. Okay, we'll, we'll look down. Uh, uh, a little bit unclear there. You say it's been taken from the Dargle budget, but it's not actually. Is that just keep them in from the Dargle figures? We we know how much those jobs cost us in the and in, in the Dargle library. We know how much operations cost us from the Dargle. Thank you. No, that, that, that clears that up. And and I take it now that we're going to have um, professional paid staff, we lose a lot of funding. Is that correct? Volunteer funding because of that? No. Okay. Yep. <laughs> right. Through the questions. Okay, I can stand down. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Larson, your statement. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I think that the staff have done a good job of bringing this issue to us, and uh, we have uh, traversed it through briefing reasonably extensively. You have to be dynamic. Adjust when demographics and pressures on our communities change. I think what's been presented to us here is a, uh, a relevant and, and uh, well thought through solution. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Second of the statement, Councillor Williams. Thank you, through the chair. Um, yes, yeah, so when this was brought to us um, previously, I wholeheartedly supported it, and I still do. Um, we're in a situation where the Mangawai Library has been run by volunteers for over 20 years that I've been here. Um, the community is growing. There are definitely more pressures, more expectations around what a library service should be in Mangawai for, for out-of-towners and also the existing community. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge the amazing um, volunteers who have run this uh, library for many, many, many years. Um, it's it's just unbelievable, actually. So I wholeheartedly support this, and I'd like to also acknowledge that um, I would imagine that the the volunteers who are very experienced will still be supporting the library and the new staff um, as we move forward in this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other active members wish to speak, Councillor Vincent? Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. But yes, I'd just like to explain the basis of my uh, question. Um, if we were to be consulting through the long term plan on whether or not this position or position should be funded, then I would have been opposed to us um, starting early with even though there's money available in the current budget, because it would be very difficult for us then to not proceed with funding it through the next long term plan period. But uh, as staff have pointed out, it has already been subject of consultation through previous um, plans, 
And um, I actually fully endorse the concept and recognise that we're just going to have to build in that much of an increase in our total budget input. And also, I'd like to commend my colleagues for following a rather novel approach of um, going with the direction taken from the briefing. Thank you. That's a no. Mr. Mayor, yeah, as I said, I always support initiatives where we can somehow bring the children, um, not in, in a humorous sense, to the book. Um, but it is also an opportunity to uh, help a growing town. Um, I would like to add, however, and I'm glad to know that the volunteers are not lacking in Mangafai, as um, the previous reports uh, said that the pressure is increasing. Um, so probably the staff will give more oh, professional service um, and uh, um, it will be a good idea. So the budget um, may not be necessarily spent to the extent we want, uh, but it, it is a, the only objection I have is it, it is done in a haste um, in terms of uh, LTP paying and being implemented quite soon. Um, I would rather get it done in after, you know, whatever we have done some consultation. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Any further? Nick, the members wish to speak. Councillor Aaron Lawson Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I just wanted to um, well, basically reiterate a lot of what's been of what's been said. Um, the the Manga fires have been in need of a of a um, decent library service for some time. Um, we had a uh, presentation consultation done last term um, with an amazing, beautiful, wonderful library strategy um, of which we can't afford. So, um, so this is just a drop in the bucket um, towards actually being able to provide library services to our district. Um, libraries are an exceptional service. They, they are the only place left in society where people um, are not required to spend money. And I think right now um, that's an extremely important um, service uh, for all communities. Um, and to be able to increase the services of our Mangafai library and make it a branch of the Kaipara libraries is, is a great success. Um, am also mindful of our LTP um, and the and the challenges that we're facing there, and this may be the only thing we can afford. But um, but it's it's a fantastic um, thing to be able to say yes to. Thank you. Any, anyone else wish to speak? Yeah, I just think those were good words, um, Aaron Lawson Collins. I'd like to endorse your comments there. I mean, I went to the library and. Dargable several times, and I've written a couple of speeches. One of them was to speak for the um, regarding the history of some of the warriors that have fought in the district. And the staff were brilliant. And when I went in there, I was blown away by how many people were using the facility. I thought, in my fossilized mind, that libraries were a thing of the past, but they're not. They're, they're great centres for communities to communicate, gather information both from council and from the, the material that's provided there. So I think um, I think this is a good thing and I'll be voting for it. Councillor Larson, you have the right of reply. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I, I disagree with uh, some points made there um, that we should wait, always wait for the long-term planning cycle before we do anything. We don't have to be dynamic. And if we we're always waiting for the decision of a long-term plan consultation, we a horrible bureaucracy where we couldn't even manoeuvre at all. So I think it's good that we're moving forward and getting on with this. And I think it's also consistent with the, the uh, proposition that we might have a community hub, which is essentially a modern library type facility. And uh, we're gradually transitioning towards that if we're ever able to fund it. Thank you. All right, put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against. Carried, thank you. Okay, we have um, unanimous lead. Yeah. Sorry? Unanimous lead. Yeah. Yes. Unanimous. Yes. <laughs> uh, a break for a cup of tea. We'll come back in minutes, two minutes. 11.30 back for those who might. 11.30 back.
reconvene, reconvene this council meeting 13th of December. We we'll go to the next item on the agenda, which is item 5.3, Ralpo Canal G floodgate procurement. Okay. Mr. Vincent. Second up. I'll take it. So how are we? And we have who we have? Um, Melissa. Melissa Parlane. Thank you. Welcome. Not Anand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'll take the report as read and just mention a few key points. So the report is on um, the procurement for Ralphall uh, floodgate. So this is a uh, MB funded um, four million dollar project. And um, council policy states that procurement plans, procurement over half a million dollars, need to be approved by council. So today we are presenting the procurement plan um, for your approval. And it also states that contracts over one million dollars um, are delegated to the council to approve. Um, and this report requests that 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 council. Um, uh, delegate that power to the chief executive in this case, um, and that's all around timing so that we can award the contract um, prior to the next planned meeting at the end of February. And so we can start construction in February um, and meet the funding timelines um, to get the project delivered by the end of June. I think those are the key points um, that I'll mention, and happy to take questions. Any, any questions? No questions? Okay, stand down. Thank you very much. Um, move the statement, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I don't have a lot to say about this because it is, after all, just the matter of the procurement plan. And I think what's been laid out makes perfect sense. And so, as our engineering advisor, we out this is a potentially yeah. externally funded project. And um, time is of the essence in getting it completed in the current construction season, I believe. So I wish them well. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I can only endorse what uh, Councillor Vincent has so eloquently put forward. Uh, it is, as I say, it is, we say, for a procurement process. Um, uh, it's a key element of the whole of that drainage resilience program, and uh, you know I'm very much supportive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Now you have your hand up. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I'm so glad uh, we are doing something real stuff now. Um, my um, what one um, two cents or whatever pence uh, is that we should. <laughs> Try to. I, I saw a lot of uh, local contractors listed, apart from the big four, five, uh, Fulton, Hogan, and Downer. And I would really like to see this money being utilized to give work to the people who have the will, desire, and should be rewarded for being local, rather than giving it to the big ones uh, for whatever reasons who are already struggling to finish the emergency works. So I, we want to make things happen, not follow the process. So I will be delighted if we have a fair share of uh, this money allocated to the people who know their job, live around, and probably can deliver 10 times better than the big ones. Thank you. Right? Okay, thank you, Councillor Mayor. Any other elected members wish to speak? Okay, move is right to reply, Councillor Vincent. Nothing to add, Mr. Mayor. Okay, all those in favour say aye. Aye. All those against, motion will carry. Okay, item 5.4, I'd like to move that item to 16 Ruai Wharf Road. Ruai, Park District Council resolves. Well, I'll make it easy for you. Want to read item B? So, it'll be item A, C, and D. You've all got that in your agendas in front of you. Okay. I'll see. Uh, Councillor Howard will second it. And we have John Burt to present this, please. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, if I could take a report as read. Um, there's, um, in summary, there's no question the house is surplus and should be sold. Um, it's It's been sitting idle now for, for a number of years since the um, tenant left it um, and can't be rented in its current state. 
Um, so the the Rapa Drainage Committee has um, that has had a view for a long time that that this was an asset of the, the previous um, drainage board, um, and that the um, the costs and income from the house have been included in the um, accounts for the for the drainage scheme, and um, and consequently uh, contributed to by the ratepayers of the drainage district. Um, and they think that this capital should be recycled into the um, um, into the drainage district rather than um, being a, um, allocated to repayment debt as per uh, council policy. Um, since that policy was adopted, there have been no exceptions that council has made. So, if council was to make an exception, it has to be really satisfied that there are exceptional circumstances, and there is a real difference in this case in comparison to other property sales that have been made. Uh, but happy to take any um, any questions. Any questions of John, Councillor Nay up there? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, two questions. Uh, one, obviously, we don't know the state of things, and um, we don't know roughly how much you're going to get out of it. Um, we do hold our meetings in Ruawai, uh, hiring a Toka Toka Hall. Uh, is it appropriate to have a meeting there, or it is in a state of disrepair that not worth consideration? That SFP hold. I don't think that's relevant to the item we've got in front of us here. No, no, I'm just it's a question not related to the motion um, because he's presenting on a, an asset of council to be sold. Uh, it'd be fair for me to um, get some information on how it stands. Thank you. Um, if, if I could um, answer, I, I think you, you, the, in terms of the Toka Toka Hall, that's not owned by council. That's a, a community asset, um, and that's where the meetings are held. The, the, the offices, which sit on the front of this uh, property at 16 Ruai Wharf Road, is the former office of the drainage board. It's no longer used for meetings, as far as I'm aware. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just to uh, provide some yeah. background information that's initially, but, um, I think probably the the meeting room area in that office building would fit within half of this here. So um, it's not really practical for us to hold public meetings and it's like it, so it has no further use as a um, meeting venue. Thank you for clarifying that. Councillor Howard, did you have a question? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I do. Thank you, John. Um, question on the, the disposal of this. I, I, I Would it be correct that the real, the only value there and well, there's, there'll be some value in the house, I mean, but predominantly, um, if you look at the CV, it's it's made up mainly of, of land. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hi, John. Um, just in relation to um, what hasn't been put forward so far, but just a question in regards to allocating the net sale um, proceeds to capital works, what exactly would that B, is that just to do with specifically the drainage or is that roading? No, no, they're talking about um, capital works within the drainage district is, is it what their proposal was. Okay. Yep. So, I mean, the, the previous item was talking about um, uh, all, the, all the funded by MBA, $3 million project, $4 million project. So, there's plenty of capital projects that it could be. Um, yep. So what's, yeah. Thank you. I think that's incorrect. Oh, that's that is correct. Yeah. Change from it, yeah. Okay. Any further questions of John Booth? Thank you, John. Stand down. Oh, okay. Do so, you have a question? <coughs> yes, Mr. Me. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed you. You know, well, I just realised that I did have a question before. Um, and and I'm, um, I guess, giving some advance warning that I do propose an amendment to the motion. Um, and um, with that in mind, I would like to clarify um, the um, if we were to proceed down the path of um, allowing the proceeds to be used for uh, funding capital works within the drainage district, do you see that that would set a precedent that would I mean, are there circumstances where that situation could arise again and we would be another 
deviation from the policy, which then might mean that we would need to review the policy. Not that I'm aware of. I don't think there's any um, former assets from boards, um, from, for example, the um, Kaiwaka um, Domain Board, uh, for example, um, that have been funded by a targeted group of ratepayers, in this, like in this instance. I think the difference is, um, the, the, I, I guess the only distinction you can make with this particular property is that, um, you know, it's, it's been um, utilised by that particular group of ratepayers and, and, and funded by them alone by, instead of the general rate, which is the case for every other property within the district that I'm aware of. That, that might become surplus. So just to confirm then, what you're saying is that if we should agree to, to the wishes of the Railroad Drainage Committee, that it wouldn't be creating a precedent that would be either a problem for the Council in the uh, implementation of its existing policy on um, using proceeds um, capital assets. I, I think that um, is really for, for, for councillors, for the elected members to make that um, Judgment. Um, as I say, the, the clear distinction with the railway drainage property is the fact that it, it has been supported by a group of targeted ratepayers alone rather than others, you know. So, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I can just add to that, I mean, uh, under Section 80 of the Local Government Act, you know, if you're going to identify an inconsistent decision with policy, it does, um, when you're looking at the decision, behoove the council to uh, identify a couple of things, and that's the inconsistency itself, the reasons for. Um, and, and the intention, or if there is any, to to relook at the policy. Okay, through the chair. Yes. Um, just looking at this policy, it's got um, to any debt that the proceeds are attached to. Proceeds will be applied to any debt that the proceeds are attached to. Is there debt within the? Is no. Okay. Any other further question, Bob? Bert? Well, actually, just perhaps a while easier if I could advance my amendment now, and then if further questions arose from the amendment, then there would be the opportunity for, for him to ask those questions. Is that sure? There you go. Okay, so um, I, my amendment is that the um, former paragraph C be deleted and replaced with the uh, words in former paragraph B um, with the following additions. Make up on the spot. Um, so we're noting that the decision is inconsistent with the application of the sale proceeds to debt policy. That's is what's what's in there, and then also um, add the words for the reason that these are unique circumstances with respect to the asset having been owned and maintained entirely by the targeted rate for Ralpo Drones District. And therefore, does not require the uh, policy regarding application of proceeds of asset sales to reducing it. Does that make sense? Councillor Vincent, just be with us for a second while Alana manically tries to get paper for you, because I think that's fair to put it on paper. Yeah. Yeah. It's not quite at hand side. I think it's pretty quick. 
perhaps Mr. Mayor, just so we have clarity, we'll get um, Alana to read out what she's got, and Council Vincent can um, clarify that's what he well, means. Well, I guess my my intention was to allow for the um, the proceeds back to the Ralph Drainage District. But also, sorry, if I can just interrupt you, two takes that, that would be when you're speaking to your demotion. I was just to clarify the, the, the sense of it, yeah. um, and um, but ensure that the provisions relating to section 80 were properly addressed. Okay. How are you going, Alana? Okay, so we've got A, B, and C. B has changed to allocate to the sale to the railroad drainage scheme budget for capital works. Oh, so the, this decision is inconsistent with the application of sale proceeds to policy. The reason that these are the unique circumstances with respect to the asset having been owned and maintained by the targeted rate of the Rapo Drainage District, and therefore does not require policy regarding application of proceeds of asset sales to reducing debt. Okay, so that needs to be tidied up. Okay, so it does not require the policy regarding application of proceeds of asset sales to, to be amended. Oh, and then if we just go back to um, for the reason that there rather than the there are unique circumstances. Okay, through you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, thank you, Alana. Councillor Vincent, you're happy with that moving, so you'll need to call for a second. To... I, can second. I can second it. Okay. Motion put forward by Councillor Vincent, seconded by Councillor Mayor. So, now, Mr. Councillor Vincent. Please speak to us, Mike. Okay, Councillor Vincent, speak to your motion. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, firstly, I, I need to uh, declare that I am a member of the Ralpho Drainage Committee, and my background goes back as far as having been uh, in my role when I was working for the Otamatea County Council as being secretary to the Ralpho Drainage Board and having attended meetings in that. Service to requirements office front of the section, um, that's, which is uh, su subject of today's uh, item. The, um, the history of the Raupo Drainage Board it, it has operated independently of, um, like as a as a statutory board in its own right. But in effect, secretarial services provided by the surrounding. Um, Council, and then that got carried over through, and I think as uh, John's report has indicated, through to become part of the Kuiper District Council and having specific acknowledgement in the uh, document which set out the reorganisation uh, as a standing committee of the Council. And that uh, continued successfully in that time. And in all of that time, so that at, at the time that um, the reorganisation took place, that was an asset belonging to the Raupo Drainage Board that then became vested in the Kaipa Council. All of that time, so before there was a Kaipa District Council and continuing on in the life of the Kaipa District Council, yeah, okay. um, there was um, that building has been uh, funded in terms of its repairs and maintenance uh, and as well as the income coming from it. Has come from and gone back to the Raupo Drainage District by its specific targeted rate. And um, that, I think, marks it out as being separate from uh, any other situation where the, uh, we have a surplus asset which we're wanting to sell. The, um, I think historically there was, as uh, Mr. Burke pointed out, a, a Kaiwaka Domain Board, and I think there might have been a Pahi Domain Board as well, and they got rolled into the Kaiwaka District Council entity. 
but significantly, I believe, and you may be able to correct me, John, um, the funding of the Pawaka Domain and the Pahi uh, Reserve comes from the general rate rather than a targeted rate. So this, what this means then is with the assets relating to uh, Ralpo, they are, this is a unique situation. It wouldn't have been contemplated, dare I say it, when the policy on application of sale proceeds was developed, however briefly it was. So um, I think given those unique circumstances, I think there is justification for Council to make um, an exception and so not have to um, commence the process for amending its uh, policy in that regard. Uh, further point, I think that as was raised in the debate on the cancellation of the Adaptive Pathways Programme, um, it was considered that um, it's much more important that the money should be spent on doing uh, practical works of which there are plenty of needs within the railroad drainage district. And even though that was only a modest sum of about 77,000 or something, and when we look at the uh, a further item in the, in the council agenda regarding the um, oh, Murphy Bowers stop bank remediation, just on that as a rough guide, you're talking 900 to a thousand dollars per meter to um, fix up a stop bank. So while 77,000 might not have got you very far, um, you, when you're selling a property like this, at least there would be something to show for um, applying that to the um, works, capital works for the, and just capital uh, for the Raupo drainage district. Ten seconds. So I commend it to you, and I look forward to it. Total endorsement from you all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Is there any questions of Councillor Vincent and um, staff member Burke? Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, question through Mr. Bird. Um, going back to that date of 1989 when the Ralpo Drainage Board was amalgamated, in, was there actually money transacted by the council to pay them? No. So there was no money transacted. No, the, the, the assets and liabilities of the entities were merged. Transferred. Yes. Even though they paid for them originally. Yes. Any other questions? <laughs> Obviously, I gave a very fulsome explanation. I have a question. Good luck with this one. Um, any documentation survive? From that 1989 amalgamation. Um, well, the, the, the 1989 amalgamation order is just we have copies of that. So that's that's the the document that created Piper District Council. That's available. We have that on file. And and that's what and that's what caused the amalgamation of the. Yeah. So there was no other agreement directly between council and. No, it was a nationwide process that happened and. Um, um, Thousands of um, different boards and councils, county councils, and um, got all got amalgamated into, into new entities. So this happened right throughout the country. Right. Thank you for that. Okay, all done there. I have a question. Sir. You have a question? Yes, a, a quick question. Can I? Sure. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether Mr. Maris or uh, Mr. John Burt will. It will help us a lot, the elected members. If you can um, uh, comment on, you did clarify that um, uh, what should be done as a policy um, to avoid a policy breach, and that has been incorporated. Are you happy with it, uh, Mr. Maris, or would you be le needing legal opinion later on? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the uh, Councillor Vincent in his amendment was was very clear about Section 80, uh, given his experience, and he's he's uh, drafted that carefully to ensure that it complies. Off the top of my Thank head. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any further questions? 
Thank you, John. Okay. Um, Councillor Vincent has made a statement. Then we have a second of the statement, Councillor Nayer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm quite delighted, and I must thank uh, publicly Mr. Vincent, uh, Councillor Vincent, um, in um, making our things easier and making us understand the policies as we make decisions based on uh, what is presented to us. So I really appreciate and comment on Sir Vincent, and uh, I'm sure he's going to save a lot of money later on by these actions uh, on other matters as well. Uh, last thing we want to see is legal bills. Thank you. Any other members wish to speak? Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, and um, this is um, a, a good motion to um, debate, and I hope that there'll actually be debate, not just people who are speaking in favour of it. Um, I, I, I really um, endorse this this motion. Um, it is exceptional circumstances. The policy that was developed um, to repay debt from asset sales, of course, was developed at a time when Kaipo District Council was heavily in debt and they needed to scrape together whatever they could to be able to reduce that debt down. And we've had discussions through our LTP process um, of, the, of the comfortable level that our debt is at at the moment. Um, so I think that this 300000 would be able to be applied far more um, effectively and appreciated far more if it was returned to the local drainage district. Um, elected members around the table have been very vocal about um, the importance of the local drainage dis district um, and of the uh, support that we need to be able to provide to them, um, that they're a critical service in the Ruawai um, area, that they'll save Ruawai from everything um, that's coming at it. So I would fully support um, returning these funds back to the local drainage district for the reasons that have been um, highlighted already of the of the, um, ex the these really unusual circumstances where we have an asset that was paid for by the community originally merged into the council has been maintained by that community. Um, I mean those funds effectively belong to that community. Um, I, I can't see how. Um, sticking um, very strictly to our um, repayment policy would see any benefit um, yeah, for for these funds uh, and and has been and has been spoken we we, are, we have an appetite to reallocate seventy odd thousand dollars to that drainage district I'd love to see this three hundred thousand dollars reallocated as well um, so that we can stand by what we um, <coughs> we can support the drainage district as much as we can. Thank you. Thanks, so Howard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, personally, I have a, a degree of sympathy um, with the drainage board um, here, but I think that the precedent, and, and as well defined as it's as been as maybe an exception, um, does present us with uh, potential challenges downstream. I would uh, absolutely always support the, the drainage board, and, and 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 I'm sure that if this these funds come back and in ultimately into the general fund to reduce debt, um, we can only be encouraging the drainage board to be um, talking to council in the future about uh, you know, other funds beyond even beyond the uh, the targeted rate um this is by no means if 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 this this uh, amendment doesn't go through this is by no means uh, closing any doors on the and i think it should be very clearly stated that it's by no means closing any doors on the drainage board thank you any other elected members wish to speak No movers or replies, and we just put it to the vote. So put in the amendment to the vote. So now we are required to vote. All right. Um, all those in favour say aye. 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 Against? Against. Division, please. Councillor Howard. Against. Councillor Lambert. For. Councillor Larson. Against. Councillor Nair. For. Councillor Pennyora. 
Councillor Pennyora. Councillor Vincent. Um, four. Councillor Williams. Who's four? Councillor Wilson Collins. Four. Mayor Jepson. Against. It's been carried. So, your motion has been carried. If I had been allowed a final right of reply, I would have made the point about um, the irony of uh, denying something from the targeted rate being provided. And I think it's encouraging general rate going to a targeted rate area. I think we've done the business. Let's move on to the next no. item. We do need to vote again, Mr. Mayor, on because it becomes a substantive. The amendment becomes a substantive motion. You just need to vote on this. So I, I, I still have a chance. Oh. No, because you didn't. No, I haven't, sp I haven't spoken to the motion. No, but it's the same motion. So you don't I know. But I haven't spoken to the main motion. So, Mr. Mayor, just so you know where we're at. Uh, so, uh, Councillor um, Vincent put an amendment forward. The amendment has carried. Uh, so then the, the process is you, the amendment becomes a substantive motion uh, and you get to vote on the substantive motion. Okay. So if you call for the vote on the substantive, Mr. Mayor, unless anybody else wants to. Substantive motion. This motion. All right, a substantive motion. The amendment becomes a substantive motion. Uh, so we're just repeating the vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay, all those in favour say aye. 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 Against. Yes. Thanks. No one's called for a division. Motion carried then. Okay. Thank you. Now we move on to item. Five point five. Pine Beach, Bayou Lakes toilet and shower facilities. Do I have a a mover? I can move, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Vincent. I can second it, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Naya. And presenting this item is yep. Helen. Welcome, Helen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as Alan commented earlier, Mark's unavailable today, so I'm with Vince to present on his, on his paper. Um, and I have got this one to talk through because I have been pretty involved in some of the activities. So uh, conscious that we did talk about this in the LTP briefing on Monday as well, this is a compliance issue. So just at risk of boring you, I will reiterate, this is about the compliance aspect for the campground. Um, the item for the actual ablution block, whether it's one or two, is in the long-term plan capital projects list for consideration. As well, um, this paper is focused on the recommendation coming from the Taharoa Domain Governance Board that Council recognises that there is something that we need to do about to, to achieve compliance to allow the cancer capacity that is currently being utilised to continue. And Councillor Williams, you had a question on this, and the answer to that question that the, the new the new new block will be an additional block and it will provide six bays for so there'll be an additional six showers and six toilets, which will provide the compliance that we need. Okay. Ready for questions? And the question. Councillor Lambeth. Yes, um, through the mayor. I'm, I'm looking at this plan here and I see now five toilet blocks. Am I correct? Five. There should be the existing one, up to two new ones, um, and the day visitor block. Should be, so there should be four on the. Unless you're also looking at the wastewater treatment plant. No, no, I'm looking at the existing. There's two existing oh, no. blocks. Yeah, so it could be yeah, through the chair. There's, there was two options for the so, committee oh, to identify. Is. So. The I think uh, there were two options and they chose option one. So um, that concept drawing has all the options. Right, so it's got the one option there as well. Yeah. Okay. And can we just clarify that one option? We are adding one extra pollution block to their already Great. Uh, installing a visitor 
the buck and down uh, closer to the to remove the need for day visitors to go up to the shower block. The LTP funding is to provide additional showers and toilets for campground. And the, the governance committee has asked for the two block option. Really Any further questions, Councillor Williams? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> um, I know the new campground toilets and showers, the cost is at 1.2 million. Um, will, it, will it be explored that, that it could be looked at having um, prefabricated ablution units that might actually bring that cost down rather than. That is what's being looked at. That is. Okay. So that that cost could come down, or that's well. There's there's a different part for the cost because there is a part of the cost is for the upgrade as talked about in the LTP session. Part of the cost is for the upgrade of the wastewater treatment plant. Yeah, but that's that's separate here is five hundred. Yeah, thousand. And so that this is just for the toilets and showers, the one point two. That's right for the two Google. blocks. So that could potentially, if we look at different that's ways of well, we we are we will we will continue to look at different ways, but we have considered. Uh, two or three different construction options already as we as we prepared this. Um, so yeah, that is the that is the cost that's coming through at the moment for that. Just for me, that seems overly expensive for two for six showers and six toilets. So I would really like it to be um, possibly looked at and maybe revised and look at all options to bring that cost down if possible. Thank you. You're welcome, Collins. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm going to apologise in advance of my question. I wish I'd thought of it before the meeting because I really should have sent it in early, but I literally just thought of it now. Um, and that is um, in doing the, the research and, and, the, and the scoping for these toilets. So my first question, I guess, is where does the water supply come from? The lake. The lake. So my second question is, is, is what, um, if any, um, research was done into the effects of the take the water tape lake to increase the ablution box. So we work with the NRC on that and we would still be under our tape. Oh, okay. We're already under, we'll still be under the existing. <laughs> but if we only consented to take a certain amount of water, yeah. we wouldn't be uh, asking for an extension for that consent. The engineer's assessment did look at all of that. Gold staff are knowing the answer. Thank you through the chair. Uh, further to that, um, is there actually scope here to have perhaps tanks as well to catch the water off these ablution blocks? Yes, sir. Can be reused? Yes. Okay. That's right. I would have to follow up Council Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Helen, you've just mentioned that there's been three concepts looked at for the construction these showers and toilets. What are they, the three different options? Oh, they said the three different options. So so are you talking about I think you were talking about construction mode. So through the chair, we looked at um unisex toilets um and having additional um shower blocks that weren't oh. um male, female separate. Yeah, we looked at different options that were Okay, so so it wasn't so much yeah, it wasn't so much the construction material we did type. we did look at a couple of those um so we did look at concrete that's what that's saying that construction material you're talking about so we did look at the concrete block versus um some prefabricated modular style decided to look to go down the path of the modulus more prefabricated modular style so that we can add if we need to in the future as well okay good any further questions councillor lambeth yeah, just to clarify, I, I realise we've got a massive peak flow there um, in that um, we're talking with 500 campers and possibly 2,000 visitors a day in, in the height of the season. Um, the waste disposal system that is there, is that, um, is, is that pumped and empty during the peak? Process or is there some sort of treatment that has been done there? It's And again, just a reminder, this is about the campground compliance. If we don't do this, we're reducing capacity. Yes. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is in part a response to growth and the nature of growth in the numbers coming to the Kaibu Lakes. 
if we had um, growth in terms of rateable assessments in the area, then we would have reserves contributions in the kitty. Would that be some if if we did have those reserves, is it the sort of thing that you could apply reserves contributions funding to? It's a hypothetical there. Through the chair, unlikely to have um, reserve contributions in the data. Yeah, that's why I say it's hypothetical, but is it the sort of thing that you, you could apply reserves for reserves? We do. That's about summer. Yeah, okay. Slam you access to the um, service. Okay, any further questions? All right, go to the movers statement, Councillor Benson. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, um, I'm, on this occasion, I'm putting my um, uh, hat on as chair of the Power Domain Governance Committee, and this is something which, uh, as a committee, we were agreed as the um, desirable option. Where we were given the, the alternative of a, a single block or um, two blocks half the size, and we thought that would be more convenient for people, since they are meant to be conveniences, um, that to um, be, better need, meet the needs of the users of the um, site. So, Iconic recreational reserve area, and um, the funding of it is another question. But I think we need to um, get the party started, and um, and this is how we propose to do that. And um, I've already, through my question, clarified that it would be something if we had reserve contributions, but we don't. But we're going to have to be creative in how that gets funded, so it's implemented. Uh, and it, as a capital project. You know, one thought comes to mind immediately is dead. Okay, thank you. Councillor Nair, second the statement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am actually quite delighted that is. Um, Kaivi Lakes is probably the jewel in the crown. And um, I expect as we support um, the rest of the opportunities for tourism in Kaibra, the place to be, uh, we should wholeheartedly uh, go for it for two reasons. One, we have uh, a bit of 600,000 or more to um, TIF, which is Tourism Infrastructure Fund funding. And also, uh, this is the first thing everybody needs who want to be there, a good toilet. And I, under I don't understand how we can deliver if we don't deliver on the basic need of the campers and tourists from not only New Zealand, but all over the world. I would like to have a piece of art there as well as Matakana has some creativity in terms of using those toilets. Thank you. I will support it. Yeah. Thank you. Council Paniora. Thank you through the chair. Um, you know, I don't want to always be a negative Nancy, but I completely disagree with Councillor Nia. Um, going back to the what we're actually discussing, which is uh, extra ablution blocks um, in terms of ensuring that we're compliant with the numbers of campers. Um, we It's a fine balancing act, so yes, I hear that we need growth and tourism and all of that, but at the same time, we have an environment that's been absolutely strangled. The water levels, the vegetation, um, it's unsustainable. Um, so my preference would be for us to not go ahead with the ablution block and actually reduce the numbers of campers if that's the um, if that's the other alternative to bring us within compliance. And that's with my my hat on as a mana whenua, um, as mana whenua of uh, this district, and also as a committee member of Taharo Governance Committee. Um, if the council continues to make decisions that are poor and are not going to be within the uh, wider future of the sustainability of the lake, then unfortunately mana whenua are going to have to take it into their own hands to rewrite the wrongs of this, of what this, the decisions that this council is making. Um, I'm totally against unsustainable toilets that are going to continue to, to extract water during the summer at a time when the lake needs the water the most at a time when there's lack of rainfall and we know that we're going into a trout a drought period um i'm totally against it thank you thank you any other elected members wish to speak 
No, okay, we'll go to yes, yes, Councillor Howard. I would, and and and, and you know, full clarification to to the last point that's just been made. Um, can can the, the team provide us what um, insights at NRC have given to mitigate uh, the risk to the lake on the draw off? So, uh, I think it was said that uh, the uh, draw off. Still be well within, or the additional drop would still be well within the limits that that are already applied. So, I'm asking a question rather than a statement. Yeah, I was asking. I was asking a question. It's a rhetorical question. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Any witness wish to speak? Okay. Um, Councillor Vincent's want to reply. Um, I, I don't think I need to delay the meeting any longer. I mean, I think we should go to a vote. Okay. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against? Carried. Okay, item 5.6. I'd like to move a, a motion which I have. Emails to Alana. Are you five point six, Council? Uh, correct. Okay, can we put that up on the board, please? Okay. Yeah, just hold five guys, and we'll put this up. So through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, just uh, I think that. Oh, there you go. I can okay. read that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can you read that, elected members? I'd like to take us through that, Councillor Larson. I'm moving that the Kaifa District Council A directs the Chief Executive to instruct the General Manager Infrastructure Service to assess the tenders to ensure that fair value is provided. Fix. And be subject to fair value being confirmed by a clause A above, delegates authority to the chief executive to award Con 1025 Arapahoe Road slip fear for the value of up to 1.8 million, excluding ST. Okay. I'll second that. We'll go to General Manager of Infrastructure Services, Anand. I think I've sent this article and Crackley NTA. NTA. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, we'll take the report as read and take any questions. Okay, any questions? Councillor Vincent. Uh, yeah, uh, my question is um, Does the alteration of the, the change from the recommendation of the staff report? To the motion we now have in front of us, make any material difference to the contents of your report or your recommendation? Um, no, um, I suppose the chief process is we will follow. We put the, the tender to market. We've um, invited prices, and what comes back, we will assess against the engineer assessment, make sure that it is fair value for money. What we believe, if, it, if we believe it's excessive, then we have to reassess. Is that value for money? Um, is it a relative option? Where do we go from that point? So, if it's within the, the, the bounds of where we think it should be, then 
it, it shouldn't affect it. Otherwise, so we would have, we would have, is that what you would have done anyway? Yeah, yeah regardless, yeah. We do, we do test those things in the value company. Um, but the market is variable and it, it does move around. So we do, we're doing a lot more of that testing it. Of, yeah. so, I guess um, follow on question from that is to ask Council Larson what the rationale was behind his um, variation to the original staff recommendations. I would like to direct your question to the General Manager of Infrastructure Services, Council of Vincent. Well, it's just that you proposed a motion, as, which is different to what was in the staff report. So I would like to know what prompted you to make that change. Uh, a discussion with the General Manager of Infrastructure Services, Council of Vincent. Okay. I can... Yep. <laughs> Um, look, this, this has um, been a long-standing issue in terms of the, the road itself. Um, there has been a number of patches uh, along the road, so the road is, is on the loop. Um, it, it's a long stretch of, of road, and I just want to be satisfied that the tender or tender that we get just represents fair value against the other work that we have done in the district. So it won't delay the process, it's just another overlay. Um, that provides me with a bit of reassurance when we recommend to the chief executive that we give me fair value for the loops. So, if I'm right, just to, we've got about 1,400 metres of road to fix. 140 metres. 140 metres. Yeah. Right. And um, that's like you're going to build a bridge over it. And we normally think of the cost of sealing a road as like. 700 to 1,000 to say a million dollars per kilometre. 600. Yeah. Um, so there's some structural uh, integrity that needs to be new built, and then there's some pavement improvement that needs to take place post that. Um, I guess the, the, the motion on the, the amendment uh, just allows another pair of eyes to, to oversee and then satisfy myself to recommend to the chief executive that. Cool. Thank you. Paid for this. I'm happy with that. Councillor so Naya. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, Anin, I have a question for you. So, um, this is a long standing matter, looks like it's not happened in the flooding or aftermath of it. Um, to be honest, I have been on RFA Road, I couldn't find the slip, and looks like it has never been talked about uh, in the last one year. Uh, but what has been talked about has not been fixed. So I, I guess the, our Kino point slip is the one which was supposed to be fixed. I don't see that. Have you done it before you start doing something which is not of crucial uh, importance? Thank you. Thank you. Through you, we'll come back to our Kino uh, slip in a minute. Get Calvin to just explore that whilst I talk about um, the, the question. Um, the this is part of our um, uh, council's uh, resilient program that we get. Uh, funding for, um, and that funding will cease in June 24. We're getting 60% funding, uh, and whilst the uh, and I have seen the engineering report that all supports the need for the work. So, whilst the um, councillor looks like that it has been there for a while, <coughs> and um, the, the the cracking does look uh, minor, uh, we do know that at, at any stage it could be a catastrophic failure as well. Um, so, if that was to occur. Um, you know, we'd need to get in there and do the work. So we're just being a bit more proactive whilst we got the funding. I can't hear anymore. Sorry. Where did they go? Alana? Hello. <laughs> Hi, Ash. I wonder if they can hear us. Just you and must Must be. Where did they go? Oh, well, I think you kicked them out or something. They're not recording. Must have been my, my right okay. that I did. Okay, I think we we have to uh, log in again.
Okay. Oh, I wonder if it'll pop back on. Got it, got it. No? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we should just stay on because Kelly and that are still on. I just was checking. I think I can see governance advisor muted, but rest of the people have gone. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Neither. I think we just maybe wait and then maybe the connection will come back on. Yeah, yeah, that's better. What are you doing? Are, are you attending lots of meetings? I'm in, yeah, no, I'm in Wellington today. Um, yeah. I'm with Peter Lucas and Tui. Um, oh, good. It's Aoi as well. Um, so you haven't voted. Of... You haven't voted in a couple of times. They asked for your vote and you were not there. Oh, because oh. I had to, yeah, I had to go pop downstairs to let them um, yeah. through. Yeah. Oh. And, oh, was it, was it for one of the divisions? Oh, yeah. No, but one, one, yeah. one thing you missed. They were yelling at you, but you're not there. Anyway, no meeting in progress. Thank yeah. you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor. But um, as a second, I would endorse those comments. I think if you look at our council expenditure, Roading is our big one, so we need to make sure we get good value. Through, through the chair, uh, can, can I um, say uh, that we lost the link uh, and I haven't heard anything being said for the last three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we can hear you now. Councilor no, Mayor. you can, but I don't know what happened in three minutes. So, thank you. So much. Okay. Okay. Any other elected members wish to speak? I, I would like to speak. I raised my hand about uh, 10 minutes ago, sir. Can I? Yes, you can. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to speak. Um, it is a substantial sum of money, $1.8 million for works which have can be done even one year later. It is not emergency works. It, it is not a lot of traffic. The quarry traffic is very minimal. It is not a highway uh, connecting to, I mean, there are hardly 100 people living on, bloody, uh, sorry, um, on the road. So I would rather save this 32%, which is 600,000 uh, for uh, uh, our, our other stuff, which is more important. So I would be voting against it, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. No, any other elected members wish to speak? Okay, um, Councillor Larson, you'll write a reply. Nothing further, thank you. Okay, all those in favour say aye. 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 Against, motion carried. Against, against, please be recorded this. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Next item on the agenda is 5.7, that's a temporary road closure approval of Hibiscus Coast Motorsport event. I will move that. Do I have a second up? Yep. Councillor Vincent. Staff, please. Thank you, Dean. Is it? Yes. Thank you, Dean. Get off through the chair. I'll take the report as read and take any questions in regard to the closure of Arcadia Road for the rally. Any questions? Questions? I think it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so you can stand out. Um, move a statement. Yep, it is straightforward. Uh, second, a statement. Councillor Vincent. Yep. I know the road reasonably well and it's well suited to that purpose. We'll see you there with your racing helmet on. Any other elected members wish to speak? No. I can, sorry, I can say a few words if I'm allowed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor. Well, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. All I, I'm trying to say is that we sh um, these temporary closures happen as a process matter. Unless we have a serious objection coming from the public, I don't think we should be spending much time and maybe give some discretion to uh, CE to get through these things. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? My right to reply. Yeah, these motor events bring money and stimulation into our district, and um, if they will run, and I see they're going to do letter drops to all the businesses and the residents, which is a great thing. Uh, so I'd like to move it straight to the vote now. All those in favour say aye. 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 Carried. Okay. Next one. After this next one. 
I'm not okay, way, but I can do another recognition. Okay, we've got another one coming up. Thank you, Dean. Uh, can I have a mover for that, please? So, Howard, thank you, Dean. So, Patrick, here, um, take this report as read. This is a new uh, event coming to Targetville in 2024, and I can take some questions now if we need it. Any questions of Dean Mitchell? Councillor Aaron Wilson. Lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just have a I just have a question as to the logistics of like you say it's a new um, a new event, and I see that we're closing off a section um, of the parking in the middle of town. So so logistically, how does that work with cars coming in and out? So they will have marshals at those closures, letting uh, I think they're leaving the BP that end for trucks refueling and shopkeepers and residents at the other end. Sorry, I don't know Target all that well. <laughs> I know what the other so, end is. Yeah, it's, it's well, my, I'll have Pointsman and Marshall. We've got that end and the other end, I understand. <laughs> um, my, other, my other question is, has there been any consultation with the business owners? Ongoing, yes. Yeah, so that, so this won't be a surprise, that that the because that's the car parking, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that if there are any major issues, they will be brought to the February meeting. To right. deal with. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Dean. Any further questions? Councillor Lambeth? I take it there's five stages. One's a rerun back got itself, is it? Uh, eight stages. Eight stages? Yeah, so there's three, sorry, four, yeah, eight stages, and they four areas, and they do each area twice. Councillor Collins, um, Dr. Wilson Collins, asked my other question about the businesses. Because I think there's around about $20 million which yeah. be blocked off. Yeah, from, yeah. yeah. Through the chair. They are hoping that the food vendors in that area get involved as well. So they don't want to bring too many into the area so that people use the, yeah, the, the, the ones available in town. Could be a fun day. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, uh, move a statement, Councillor Lambeth. <laughs> yes, um, it's coming from the floor. It could be a fun day, and, and it is one thing which um, they will widely need um, to bring external energy into it and um, create that market atmosphere um, with the increase in um, <laughs> interest that. Um, the international rallies are showing if we can put on a good show here, you never know, we might flip the big one up and later down the track. So, yeah, I'm fully supportive of Thank you, Councillor Lambeth. Um, Councillor Albert, the second note. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, for a new event, uh, it looks to me to be very well organised and, and all, all elements covered off um, coherently uh, and, and great uh, opportunity for the area. So um, I have no. Thank you. Any other elected members wish to speak, Councillor Naya? Thank you. Um, yeah, I would like to have these things happening on a regular basis. And to be honest, I'm so delighted. Um, Mr. Mutton from Waka Kutahi um, has closed Brenda Wen, and they are having a promotional campaign that there is no need to go through Brenda. You can go through the twin course discovery because you can see so much more. So I would say these rallies um, and any any kind of events which bring attention to Dagaville and the routes uh, are only doing us favor. So I'm all for it, and I'm so delighted something is happening in Dagaville. Thank you. Thank you. Any other elected members wish to speak? Oh, Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins. Thank you. Um, I forgot to ask one question, so I'll put it in my statement, and that's, I assume that, that this um, rally um, arrangement is similar to the other ones that we've had where, where any damage to the roads needs to be rectified. Um, I'm just going to assume that that's the case. Um, but but what, I, what, what I wanted, yeah, what I wanted to, um, <laughs> what I just wanted to point out was when I read the, when I read the recommendation in the road closures, I thought I had a rally going past my house. 
um, why who we rode Ho Kanga Road parting a street, but um, when you actually read the detail, there's only the very, very one little block at the very beginning of Ho Kanga Road that's been closed. Oh, I was getting some excitement. <laughs> okay, any other elected members wish to speak? Okay, we'll go to movers, right of reply, Councillor Lambeth. I would nothing further this time. Just at the point, it's not coming past my road. I would have started behind you. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> and we've got all, all those in favour say aye. 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 And we will break for lunch for a wee break and we'll come back at 10 past one.
meeting 13th of December 2023. We've had our lunch. Let's move on. Got item oh. 5.9 procurement plan approvals. Can I have a hang on a minute, please? Uber, please. I'm sorry, Vincent, can I have a seconder, please? I'm sorry, Lambert. Um, sorry, Mr. Mayor, this is the Irishman, and I have a question. Okay, well, I'll turn up. If we could run on that, I would come up with yeah. But I'll just sit here. It would. Okay. Well, I, knew it was, I knew it was embedded in, in one of the questions, so I just wasn't sure which one. What's the okay, all right. Um, so reporting staff is Melissa. Good afternoon. Thank you. Hi, Melissa. Hello. Uh, I will take the report as read again. There was a question from Councillor Williams, so I'll just address that first. And it was around the updated costings for the Raniora car park. Yeah. So um, recently, internally, the business case um, was updated and um, revisited the November 2022 budget. So it was a desktop review um, of the budget and we've uh, including or accounted for inflation and included the 20% contingency. And we believe we can deliver the project stages one and two for 965, which is within the allowed budget. <clears throat> um, right, so the report itself um, is to Delegates approval of the procurement plans for six of our largest projects this year. Um, similar to the Raupo situation, it's about expediency and getting these projects through to tendering. Um, and if we need to wait until the February meeting, then all of these projects will be delayed and are at risk of not being delivered this year. Um, I'm confident that most of these projects can be delivered this year if we're able to um, tender in January. Any questions? Any questions, Councillor Nair? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a couple of questions um, for you. Uh, one, um, how old are these things? I mean, is it just decided a few months ago or are they in the pipeline for many years, um, all the items? And uh, if you answer that, I'll ask the next one. Yeah, thank you. The question was, how old are these projects? Yeah, yes. So these projects are all approved in the annual plan or approved carryovers from previous years. How old would they be like a couple of years old, right? Um, so are they taking priority over emergency works? Are they taking priority over emergency works? Mm -hmm. um, so these, these projects um, are all projects that were approved in the annual plan. Um, and these ones are being brought to council because they are procurement over half a million dollars and they require council's approval of the procurement plan. I'm not suggesting that these are taking priority over any other projects. These are just the ones that I need um, council um, to make a decision on. The rest of them can be managed um, within the chief executive's delegations. Okay. And the second question I have, um, are these the one uh, funded or partially funded 32% funding? No? Or are they just from our own council funded? Um, most of these are council funded. Uh, Rangior, for example, is a mixture of funding. Um, it's TIF funding and council funding. Um, I think that's the only one. Okay. And the last question is um, this Dagawil wastewater, you have a balance screen for a million dollars. Um, is it an additional? Don't they have a screen at the moment? And I'm just surprised how they are managing now. Uh, there's no screen currently. Also, oh, there's no screen at the moment, is it? That's right. Okay, thank you. Further questions? Okay, thank you very much, Melissa. Dan Dowen. Um, leave a statement, Councillor Vincent. Okay, thank you, Mr. The item that constitutes just the enabling the council to get on and into its core business. And I'm quite confident of the chief executive's ability to oversee this 
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the Nothing more to say than what Mr. Uh, Council wants to say. Okay. Um, any other elected members wish to speak? Uh, yes, I will uh, just say a minute, um, if I could, Mr. Mayor. You wish Can to I? speak? Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, all I'm saying is I'm quite delighted to see uh, things coming to the table uh, which have been going through and will happen uh, very early rather than being postponed. So, um, no, I'm, I'm quite in favor of these kind of actions. Thank you. Any other elected members wish to speak? Okay, move is right reply, Councillor Vincent. Well, nothing to add, Mr. Mayor. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Vincent, motion carried. Okay, we move on to item 5.10, retrospective approval to appoint a roading engineer. I'd like to move that. Second that. Seconded by Councillor Larson. Uh, presented by General Manager Infrastructure, Arnold. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I take the report as read, but I might just give a little bit of an overview on, on why we bring this paper to Council today. Um, so, we are seeking approval um, to appoint. Uh, Blair King to assist uh, myself in um, some immediate roading improvement activity. Um, the reason why we're bringing this paper is that we're seeking unbudgeted expenditure for that uh, piece of work. Um, finding it actually necessary to, to engage an expert uh, assist in the uh, repairs that are currently going on. Um, we're, we're spending quite a lot of money between now and June uh, doing significant repairs. Um, and my observation is that we do need to have some oversight uh, on that, in addition to the NTA staff who are also doing the oversight. Um, and uh, as I said to you, there's a support that is required to help me go through um, through this piece of work that uh, Ventia uh, are doing. We're also doing multiple uh, activities, as I outlined um, last Wednesday through our 17A, so there's quite a lot of heavy lift um, that's required between now and in June, hence the, the need for um, engaging someone with um, sufficient experience to assist uh, myself in making sure that the quality of the workmanship um, is, is well done. Thank you. Any questions of Tony? Councillor Mayor? Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, um, Anin, uh, my question is directly related to you, obviously. Um, so, what I understand being on regional transport committee, I hear uh, with no, um, you know, uh, observation, but Mr. King and his Kingston involved in many places, including emergency repairs on Paparoa Okala, uh, Wood Oakley Road and whatnot. What I'm trying to ask you is that commitment, would he be able to have that time for you? I, I, I'm okay with engaging him because he's an engineer and competent with your decision, but uh, this commitment, would he be able to honor his times scheduled? Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, just prior to um, engaging, I did talk to him about uh, his capacity to assist Piper District Council in the work that's uh, set out in the short term, and he's reassured me that he does have sufficient capacity to do so. Thank you. Councillor Howard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Anand, thank you for this. Um, in principle, um, good idea, as far, far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> but be interested to preface that all with um, are you anticipating uh, a, a form of return um, from this, I, I imagine, in, at least in the form, whether it be cost savings or better productivity dash better quality? Um, the last two. Last two. In terms of better quality and productivity, um, we have an understanding of what the costs generally are through the NTA, <clears throat> and we'll apply those costs. My concern is more around the quality, okay. productivity. Do it once, do it well. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess my question is more related to process rather than content, and I don't have an issue with the idea that we um, provide. A relatively modest amount of extra resource to enable the, the um, quality and productivity of our results on the roading front goes. But I just concerned, like my 
understanding was that as a governance body, we only appoint one person, that's the chief executive. And if the chief executive appointed um, Mr. King to, to do this work, I wouldn't have a point with that. If it's a matter of now having to come back to council because that's a large of expenditure, um, or all any good. I'm concerned at a couple of the statements in, in your report that indicate that the mayor directed the chief executive to appoint Mr. King, and that troubles me as well. And I was just wondering um, how we can work our way through this, given the result is fine. I don't have a problem with the result of what we're aiming to achieve, but I just, once again, as a, I guess a recurring theme for me is attendance to proper process. But maybe that the chief executive could respond and say, well, um, is the council responsible for appointing more than one member of staff? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, if I can. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. No, uh, you're, you're responsible for appointing uh, chief executive only. Uh, any uh, consultant contractors, um, I, I, I appoint unless it's over a certain threshold, i.e., you know, contracts, that sort of thing. Um, the reason this is coming to you is exactly as you said, uh, because it's unbudgeted expenditure, it could be up to $80,000. And I think given the um, economic environment and the pressures this council is under, it's important to to make that clear and get your decision on that because it is unbudgeted um, as well. Um, as far as the the company itself, you know, as you may be aware, um, Anand is with us uh, seconded and only for a certain amount of time each week. Um, so there is, you know, there, there is a, a bit of a gap there that we need to fill. Yeah, for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> no comment on it. <laughs> He's having a good time, though, I Anna. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, my my uh, colleagues I, can improve. <laughs> sorry. Another question, I guess. <laughs> Councillor Mayor. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The question is uh, um, to the, Mr. C. Morris again. Is now uh, we are in a delicate environment of three waters, and as uh, you mentioned, Anin is on kind of uh, three waters agenda. and. Uh, he will be uh, engaging or looking after um, Mr. King for six months. Uh, so in an eventuality where Mr. Anin Nama is not with us anymore, uh, who is going to uh, look him uh, or oversee his work? Thank you. So through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm not really sure I understand your question there, Councillor Nair. Um, so uh, Anin will be overseeing uh, our consultant in the roading space. Uh, and driving that, and he's got sufficient time to do that. This actually frees him up a little bit as well. No, question was very clear. It was related to he's here on a three waters delegation or whatever it is. He's not your our employee, as I understand. What I'm asking you, Mr. Mares, in an eventuality in a month, he's asked to be transferred <laughs> back. Who is so, going to look so after? Apparently, you know, I don't want to really want to talk about employment conditions in a public environment, to be honest, the councillor now. Um, however, uh, we, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with the level of support we have from, from our general manager here, uh, and we'll have uh, to adjust to anything that happens in the three water space in the future. Okay. Any other questions from councillors? Okay, move the statement. <coughs> What's that? A question. Oh, sorry. Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins, I didn't see your hand up. Okay. Um, what's the usual process um, for employing staff? So, through you, Ms. Mayor, this isn't the point of staff member here, it's a consultant who's, who's in. Sorry, what's the usual process for employing for contracting consultants? Okay, so if it depends on the threshold spend, so this is um, if it's under 100,000, I think I'll put that in the report, we request three quotes. Generally, uh, and according to that procurement policy, um, I have the ability to approve a variation to that, an exception to the rule. And um, the reason why I think that's appropriate in the space is we have um, the Kingston Consulting um, engaged in <coughs> a reviews as a technical expert as well. Um, and so there are synergies between the work he's doing in that space for us on the on the six, both 17A reviews on the district and the region, um, and the work in the maintenance contract to make sure that it all lines up in a nice way, and we we get synergies in that space. So um, that's why I'm comfortable. Any other questions? 
Okay, thank you. Um, Mover's statement. Um, I'm very satisfied that this is going forward because I recognise that, um, particularly Young is one of our key members, he's covering a hang of a lot of different subjects in the district, which are high value um, activities, particularly the roading. The roading is our biggest number. It's become evident to me, particularly with the amount of phone calls I get, the amount of work, well not work, but the amount of times that myself and other members have driven the roads locally that that we need that oversight. And um, I think it will actually save us a heap of money. That's my ambition here, to see that we save money, not spend it. Okay. Councillor Larson. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I just uh, refer you back to decisions that have been before us recently where we've you know, had figures like something on something in the uh, order of $115 million being budgeted to be spent on roading in the district. And uh, I think that we really do need to have a very clear expert focus on our roading and to an extra resource to um, and in that space, I think that this uh, is really um, appropriate that we have someone appointed who has also got their finger on the pulse of all the reviews that we have, that we have some level of independence in terms of uh, dealing with our roading issues at present. So uh, I, I endorse this approach. Thank you. Okay, um, Councillor Paniora, did you want to wish to speak, please? Um, yes, thank you, through the chair. Um, so my statement is around the process or lack thereof, um, and which has been already raised. When this came to our attention as councillors was in an email a couple of weeks ago, um, and I my response to the email was that I'll have no um, nothing to do with this decision. Um, that's already been made. So a retrospective decision that's already been made is not something that we should be um, look like even discussing today because the decision's been made, he's been engaged. So why are we here is the first thing that I'm asking. Um, it's, I'm extremely concerned by the whole process, which sounds like Jason Maris was brought into a room um, at the behest of the mayor and deputy mayor <laughs> to um, engage a consultant, which is completely outside of the scope of us as governors. That is a organisational um, appointment that's squarely within the realms of Jason's job description. Um, so that's the first point that I want to make. The second point that I want to make is we're talking about saving money, yet we're We've engaged um, a friend of some of the councillors for one to two days per week for six months, and we're talking what is it, seventy or eighty thousand dollars? Let's do the maths on that. So that's one hundred and sixty thousand pro rata per year for one to two days per week, and the scope of works that we've got them engaged for is the same responsibilities that sit with Arnon. Jason and NTA. So we're paying another person to do the jobs that we're already paying other people to do. So we need to be looking at what isn't working within the jobs that we already have, who we're already paying staff for. And if they're not doing their jobs to the adequate level, then that's for our committee, the relevant committee. Um, this whole thing is a farce and I'm disappointed in it and I'll have no part in it. I'll be abstaining from the decision. And I think that the Auditor General ought to be looking at this. Thank you. Councillor Lambeth. Yes, um, just recently we had our roading contractors come to us and say that there has been an $18 million blowout in their budget. As a Board of Governors, when you get that sort of blowout, it is only prudent to put somebody in there to have a good look 
independent of that organisation. If we did not do this, we wouldn't be doing our job as a of governance. I think this has been acted on very, very quickly with that budget blowout, and I think it is prudent that as Board of Governors we do this. Thank you. Councillor No. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, I, I'm kind of confused and have mixed feeling now. Um, I am nothing against Mr. Blair. I totally endorse his capabilities. Um, and I have concerned with his uh, availability more so, apart from the fact that we are giving away so much money um, with no, I don't know about the terms, uh, the performance guarantee or whatever it comes out of it. Um, I do not, I actually dislike the process. Um, I, I hope there's not arm twisting going on whereby decisions are made on behalf of the mayor um, uh, by uh, Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris has engaged many consultants to our knowledge uh, in the last three months, and he already might have spent 200 to 300,000 on those consultants. Um, and then we are hiring some consultants. So is it, I don't know whether it is not to his liking, that's why he's with us, or, um, so I would really like to, as he said in the morning, and that's what we are aiming to achieve is transparency, no surprises. And uh, I, I take side with Mr. Or Councillor Vincent, I take side with anyone who dare to speak that we are lacking in transparency. Uh, that's my concern. In terms of delivery, I have issue where they have already mentioned that his capabilities are not doubted, but his timing is because his fingers are in everywhere. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Um, firstly, I'd like to say that um, I Anand wants some extra help. We should give Anand extra help because um, if he wants a hand to elect four buildings in a single bound, well, I think we should make that possible. And I also uh, accept the, the suitability of, of um, Blair King Kingston consultants uh, to um, fill this gap. That's not a problem. And I, I also I think. In relation to the nature and scale of the problem, $80,000 is a good investment. It's not, I don't see it so much as an expense. For and, I, and I think that will, that investment will provide us with a return. But I have to reiterate my concern about appearances of um, undue interference by the mayor in the operation of the, the chief executive's responsibilities. Um, but I have to, I feel bound in the interests of what's best for the people of the district to go with the recommendation. Thank you. Thanks, Sir Howard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I look at this as, uh, as Councillor Vincent has said, as, a, uh, as an investment, but I look to the return as being how much better we, return we can get from our whole roading investment our spend in the next not well later this year but certainly 2024 25 and ensuing years by setting up right protocols and fine-tuning whatever is needed to be done to get more mileage from our biggest spend ever a uh, spend category so to me um yes time will tell but this looks to be a very good investment any other recommend members wish to make a statement? Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I have to agree um, with with most of what Councillor Vincent has um, has said, and and I appreciate the comments of Councillor Paniora. Um, the this this process is not ideal, um, and I'm not I'm not in support of it. Um, the issue isn't about being good governors. The issue isn't about the end result that we're trying to achieve, and the issue isn't about um, Blair King um, himself being appointed. Um, the the issue that I have is um, has has been about is the um, undue influence um, that's been put in towards the chief executive's role. Um, I 
Um, I don't believe that this has been a, a good process. We've got no test against the market uh, for the costs that we're incurring. Um, the fact that it's a retrospective decision, again, um, I'm not quite sure what a few weeks difference would have made for it to come to the council as a decision. Um, and so that, that's confusing in itself. Um, and yeah, and I just feel that our, our responsibility is not in hiring or contracting um, consultants. And um, yeah, it raises a lot of concerns for me um, in regards to the relationships that we have with our CE um, and with our other staff. So in result, absolutely, we, 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 there is no question that our voting, um, our voting is, in a, is in a situation that we want to perform better and we want to find tools to be able to do that. And an $80,000 investment is, is probably not a lot of money, but I don't agree with how this has been done. Um, and in fact, there's, there's words I'm not gonna use um, that are probably possibly being bandied about in the community when they see a report like this. So um, I would in favor. Other members wish to speak. Okay, so some of you are unhappy about process, but when you're the mayor and you're the guy that gets phone calls 24 7 about what's happening out there, you talk to your CE and you ask him, What can I do? Arnon's run off his feet, I know he is, I know how hard he works and what he does. He's got lots of issues, all sorts of infrastructure issues. And we know there's expertise there that can help us. And I can tell you now, even though this is, I'm not gonna talk about some of the issues I've dealt with, with, with my CE and with the people I have to talk to as a mayor, but I can't talk about something because I don't want to talk about it because it's not publicly excluded. But I can tell you, we've made huge savings already by being active and how we try and deal with the issues out there with our roading. And um, so I'm asking you for, for support. You might not quite like the process, but what we're doing as a council is to try and sort these issues with limited budgets to try and get better performance out there on our roads. And I think I trust that we will get there a much more satisfying result going forward. And um, having someone that can oversee, someone who has intimate knowledge of what roading entails. I mean, I'm a little bit blessed, I guess, because I've been involved in roading in my life, but not to the extent that I've been involved with the sort of roading issues we've got here. But I can tell many a time when I get called out to look at things that are happening on our network that the job wasn't what I would expect. So who do you go to? That's why I come back to what I said right at the start. Who do you go to? You know, you've got to do something about it. You can't sit on your hands. You've got to you've got to get a result. So um, I stand by what we're doing. I think it's going to be very rewarding for rate payers. So with that I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour, say aye. 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 Have my um, vote. So the chair. What was that, Councillor Fenero? Ah, uh, division. I called it division and abstain. Abstain. Councillor Howard. Four. Councillor Lambert. Four. Councillor Larson. Four. Councillor Nair. Four. Councillor Fenero. Abstain. Councillor Vincent. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. Councillor Wilson Collins. Against. Mayor Jepson. Four. Okay, carried. Okay, carried. Thank you. Item 511. <laughs> Council Animal Management Annual Report, 1st of July 222, 30th of June 223. Can I have a mover for this, please? Councillor Howard, seconder. Councillor Lambert. Thank you. So, um, welcome, Dean and Amy, to present us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the introduction. In summary, the KDC's Animal Management Annual Report is required to be provided to the Department of Internal Affairs. 
The report is specifically on how the KDC manage and enforce our provisions of the Dog Control Act and, in fact, ensuring that we fulfil our statutory requirements for the past year, 22 and 2023. You will note that the attachments A and the general are the general report, and the attachment B is the associated statistics for your information. I trust you have noted and read the report and therefore seek your further support to submit the annual report to the Department of Internal Affairs. Are there any questions, please? Ms. Ashes, questions? There's some written questions, is there? Yes. Uh, Councillor Nair has asked with regards to dog attacks, noise, barking, and taking action. My response was it has been an unusual year as we are used to seeing a decline in these matters in the previous years. This recent rise has been put down to people going back to work after COVID and not being as responsible as previously. It is consistent with the information we have received from our neighbouring councils. The team are building a resilient team and have been carrying out many more patrols and monitoring to combat this increase. You'll note that in the report. The team have also carried out several letter drops regarding dogs barking and communicated this through our communications team. We also plan to go into schools in the new year with an education program regarding dog responsibility, dog ownership, and animal behaviours. The second question from Councillor Nair was the animal management team about being careful upon registration fees and charges. The team have only this year recently increased the fees and charges to meet CPI. This was after continually not increasing the fees and charges for the past three years. The increase was justified as we cannot expect the ratepayers to fund this service on behalf of the user pays. That said, I thank you for your reminder and we will continue to be mindful of the subsequent increases in registration fees. I hope you will find that we are competitive and economical compared to other council. Thank you. Any questions? That's uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Dean, um, and uh, co commendations to, to your team because obviously there is a, a significantly a number of uh, issues and challenges that you face and then and managing them well i note um i guess the concern is and i don't know what the history has been but we've got 10 percent of dogs that are unregistered and uh you know that's that's 500 to 600 dogs um significant now uh, Combined to that, we have perhaps the really alarming thing is a doubling, basically, in the attacks this year from 39 to 69. I know it's not quite exactly doubling, but near enough. How many of these attacks are attributed to unregistered dogs? What proportion? Approximately 40% were unregistered. Unregistered? Yes. Okay. So. In a case like that, if you're able to get the dog, have the dog, what happens? Currently, what we're doing is we um, have emailed, phoned, and now we're door knocking for those people. It's unrealistic to be able to uh, impound 500 to 600 dogs, so we have to target and um, a lot of those people have been turned around or they go through the court process for those who still are persistent we can um, uh, impound them again infringe and euthanize so so if i may just as an extension to that of these 69 uh, attacks 40 percent are from unregistered dogs way you know a huge proportion very interesting link so are they if caught immediately euthanized not immediately no um so just to um you can correct me dean if you're um, oh. online so we will um if the dogs are unregistered we will um leave the opportunity for the owners to um, collect the dogs or acknowledge that the dogs are theirs within seven days 
Um, if they acknowledge that their dogs are their, the dog is theirs within seven days, we'll infringe them for being unregistered. Uh, they'll need to go through a process to become registered and microchip before we release the dog. Um, if they do not um, meet that within seven days, then we will look at rehoming if they've um, got good nature and that's an option. Um, but however, if they're not collected within seven days, uh, they we don't have the opportunity to rehome them. Then at that point, we'll euthanise. Yeah, and, and I was going to leave this to, to later on. I, I've never had involvement in owning a dog. Right? So there are idiosyncrasies that I, I don't understand. But I would have thought that if a dog is caught having attacked a person and is unregistered, there is no second wind. Well, thank you. Yeah, through the, the through, through the chair, yeah. Um, an attack has to be investigated thoroughly and if it's not handed over then it remains um, it can't be uh, euthanized immediately under the law it has to go through the court process which is a very very lengthy process and cost and costly and the when we're successful which we have been in the past um, you get a pittance back of that money that's spent so we have to care be careful in what our decision making is in that um, sometimes we try to get them handed over um, and and or paid for for we encourage the yeah okay so so I guess if I may sorry Mr Mayor one subsequent question to that is that given these frustrations and these difficulties and costs have we um, uh, seen options to say submit I mean we're bound by bureaucracy that comes from central government uh, in this situation. Um, uh, so if we had the inclination to submit on on making it more finite and faster process? That, that would be a, uh, a decision for the Department of Internal Affairs, I believe, then to make that amendment with these statutes. It's not for us. We could make I don't know, but it could be for us to yes. connect with okay. the EIA. Okay. That's fine. I, I, I encourage it. Any further questions of staff? Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm intrigued by this estimate of uh, that for 10 per cent of the dogs registered. And I'm reminded of a, a quote from Donald Rumfeld, who said that there are known knowns, things we know that we know, and there are known unknowns, things that we know we don't know. But there are also unknown unknowns, things we do not know we don't know. So, which category would that ten percent fall into? <laughs> I, I, I think through the chair. I think I did keep up with that. Or not. <laughs> um, it was both. It would, it would be all of them yes. we know of, um, some we don't know of, and then there are unknowns, literal unknowns, to simplify things. Did you come up with a number somehow? We we did a best guess on that. Um, through the chair, I will respond to that in the next year's um, report as a, a very very accurate figure because we we're, we're detailing that now. This is for the 22, 23 year. Uh, to the 30th of June. Yes. So it didn't include that horrible attack that took place recently. No. Yeah. Councillor Lambert. So taking from what your estimates are that. 10% are unregistered, and yet 40% of offending dogs are unregistered. It would indicate that registered dog owners and the registered dogs are generally better looked after and kept than unregistered dogs, which would probably be a given, wouldn't it? <laughs> when you say better looked after, you don't mean welfare wise, or do you just mean supervised or kept? Not wandering. Not wandering, not found wandering. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it is the unregistered dogs which are, are a problem. There's a big problem there, yes, okay. through the chair. Hmm. Any further questions? Thank you very much. You can stand down. Um, Councillor Howard, move a statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as I've said, is that uh, I'm sort of agnostic here because. I've never had the inclination to own a dog, um, but I do commend our team on this and, um, you know, a very thorough report. 
Um, it's of real concern, I think, that we've seen an increase of 80% over the previous year of requests for service. And, uh, you know, that must put immense um, additional stress on. And, and so, you know, that is acknowledged. It's always a worry when, I guess, in any society that you have those that will not take the responsibility of registering their animals and things like that. So we can only commend you to uh, get that number down and uh, work on it as best you can. So, uh, well done. So, Lambeth, second is Stapleton. Yeah, very difficult job to do. Um, animal control. <coughs> um, you're dealing with a, with a difficult environment of the offending parties, and, and it's not easy. Um, unlike um, Councillor Howard, I've had basically dogged around all my life, so um, you know, I'm a little bit probably more experienced that way than what he is, but um, yeah, um, it, it is alarming to see those estimated statistics coming out on the offending dogs, and it's obviously for the general public out there, it's a major concern for them, and it's an area which we probably need to um, give this team as much support as they can get. Thank you. Okay, any other elected members wish to speak? Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just in regard to the, uh, my line of questioning earlier, I would like my support for the motion to be known. Thank you. Oh, but. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyone else wish to speak? Um, I'll have a quick word here. We had that um, unfortunate dog attack a couple of weeks back. I must have had six phone calls and media requests to speak to because it was quite a nasty attack. But the interesting thing was. It's not a darn thing that us as a council could have done to prevent that. It was in the house. It was known to the owners. Um, so, you know, we could have 10 times as many people involved in dog operations, but we still wouldn't get to the end of having the problem because it's out there and it exists and it's going to always be there. And on that note, I'd just like to say that I thought Hardy did a wonderful job of communicating to the, to the press and the elected members on that. Thank you very much. It was well done. So um, that's all I have to say there. Thank you. Move as right or reply, Councillor Howell. Uh, I think it's all been checked. Okay, I put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against, motion carried. Thank you. Aye. Okay, alcohol control bylaw 2018 statutory review. Um, can I have a mover for that, please? Councillor Lambert, second that. Councillor Vincent, and uh, we have Virginia, is she online? Welcome, uh, Virginia. Three, Mr. Mayor, Virginia, you, you all good? Yep, you can, we can. Can you hear me? Yep, now please interview. Thank you. <laughs> Um, good afternoon, elected members. This is the five-year statutory review of this uh, bylaw. Um, I take it as my report being read, and so I'm here for any questions. Any questions? Because you're getting off light today, Virginia, aren't you? Any questions? Am I? <laughs> no questions there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I'll go to the mover's statement, which is... Um, Councillor Lambeth. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through decades and decades of trial and error, um, this bylaw creates a vital tool for, um, especially the police and law enforcement agencies, to um, enforce these regulations. Um, because there's so little changes, could have saved a little problem. That's why we're experiencing several changes today. Um, this is a vital piece of um, legislation which we need to back 
I'm not going to say any more than that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, just briefly, I think um, you know we're presented with a report which covers all the bases, and um, it's uh, appropriate to the next stage. Thank you. Okay. Any other elected members wish to speak? <coughs> Move as right reply against all members. That's all being said. Thank you. Okay. Put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. Aye. The yes, motion carried. Thank you. And then we move to the next item on the agenda, item 5.13, the amendment to the appointment of hearing commissioner's policy. Can I have a move for that, please? Councillor Larson, have a second that. Councillor Vincent. <coughs> Reporting staff member is Lloyd Barton. Welcome, Lloyd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillors. Um, the report can be taken as read. Um, it's a uh, fairly minor amendments to the um, Hearing Commissioner policy approved uh, by a makeover in August. Uh, just makes provision for an external commissioner to make uh, resource consent determinations. So they are determinations, uh, different from a hearing, determinations are decisions whether to notify an application or not, and if it's not notified, to go on to make a um, decision to approve that non-notified application or not. Um, it's a tool to have, um, particularly in uh, to, to basically ensure a fair process, avoid conflicts of interest. Um, to answer any questions in relation to the report. Thank you. Any questions? I should get off light here today too, Lord. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Statement, Councillor Larson. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. We've already been through it in briefing to give staff some more flexibility to do some work they need to. So, Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think while these, the scale of these changes is quite modest, it can be uh, quite important because for those who are into that sort of thing, they would be aware of a situation where it becomes a thing that's taken up in the media about whether or not a particular development should or should not have been publicly notified because um, stakeholders or other potentially affected people the opportunity to, to join the process. So, um, and there's, um, I'm not going back to Donald Rumsfeld, but there's actual conflicts of interest, but there's also the perception of conflicts of interest as well, in that um, uh, can be accusations about council being uh, in cahoots with a, a developer, or simply where in the obvious situation where the council is the applicant. And it's a much safer process to have some external um, involved in that. So I'm, I'm happy to endorse this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other elected members wish to speak? Okay. Um, yeah, Councillor Larson, you'll write a reply. Nothing further, thank you. Yeah, put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Yes, carried. Okay. We move on to item 5.15. Uh, LCP financial contributions policy December 223. Can I have a move for that, please? Can we skip in the review and financial policy? Yes. Okay. The LCP financial contributions policy. No, review and finance. Oh, no, it's taken out, isn't it? Yeah, it's drawn. So 5.15. Can I have a move for that? So how can I have a seconder? Councillor Williams, thank you. Um, thank you, Sue. Um, so this is a just a basic policy um, because the rules are in the RMA or other policies we have, like use of how you use the um, financial contributions for reserves is in the use of reserves policy, um, and so we take financial contributions either as part of the resource consent, and that might be for particular developers to develop a um, 
footpath or um, or something else to do with roading. Um, but with regard to the reserve contributions, that's five percent of the value of the lot, and that's um, taken at the time of the reserve uh, at the time of the resource consent as well. Um, it's a condition generally, and um, this is this is just a basic policy saying we're doing it. Okay. Any questions of Councillor Vincent? Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm intrigued that the, um, in, in your report it says that the, um, it does not trigger the significance criteria outlined in the significance engagement policy. At the same time, it's going to be included in the draft long term plan. So it would be possible for people to make a submission to the effect they would like to see changed to the financial contributions policy through the LTP process, would that be right? Potentially, but it's not something that I think it has to go into the long-term plan. That's my understanding. Oh, I thought that was part of the package in terms of- We do do that to make it simpler and for, um, for staff and for the community, if you have all the rules in the one package, but some of the um, policies like the treasury policy, which has been through council, those policies don't need to be go through another process. But you did accept that, say, if someone raised a concern about it, they could put in a submission to the process and it would be considered yes. in, the, in the hearing process and the outcome might be a change to the, to the process. Potentially. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Thanks for Howard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sue, is the, the financial contribution for 5%, is that a, a standard rate? Across the country, or is it just specific to us? Or no, that's a set of some. Don't. Yeah, most um, councils take um, a percentage of the lots as the financial contribution, and uh, generally I understand it's 5%. I'm not sure if that's in the Act or not. But, but we would have. For a maximum, yeah. There is a maximum threshold, is there? Yes. But it's not the 5%. I'm not sure. Okay, I, I'd be interested to know whether, uh, based on projects, etc. that we had, if we were coming, whether we had the flexibility as part of LTP process or the likes of increasing them. I can get that information to you, but I think it's, we're taking whatever maximum we can at the moment, but. Councillor Williams. Thank you, through the Chair. Um, I'm just coming back to, um, at, at a previous briefing, we were going to have the development contributions come to us in December, but we we haven't looked at reviewing that policy. Or it's just because of, we can only do it through an LTP process, is what I understood. That's right. So, um, yeah. So the step I have to get you to first do is to tell me what the capital contribution, what the capital, um, what new capital is going to be in there. Then we can allocate a certain amount. Of money. So we've had our second LTP meeting where you've actually trimmed down quite a bit. We're probably at the stage where we can look at it. The next time it comes, we'll come to you with development contributions, but they'll only be for roading and um, parks. So that's before we go out. January. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It'll be, it'll be um, either January or um, February that we're planning it. So that would be at a February briefing. Yes. That's all awesome. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, could you clarify for me, please, what the development contribution for parks is? Uh, so that was brought in the last time, um, and I think it's something to do with, um, might be to do with the Mokai Shear Path or Kai, Kaiwi you know, from memory. There might have been some money spent on Kaiwi um, lakes in the past and um, part of the Mokai Shear Path might have been funded by development contributions. Small part of it, because most of it's funded by um, financial contributions or, um, or or NZTA. So thank you. I, I thought I understood the roading development contribution, but didn't know we had a parks development. Um, yeah, through the chair, the other, um, we, what we have got is a development contribution. I uh, know it's um, two and a half million that we're trying to collect on behalf of the Mangafai Library. Yeah, but that's not a park. 
No, but it's a community asset. So just it's not just roading. That was all I was alluding to. That we've got, we have a community. Um, we've collected monies for that for the la on the last um, two years. Okay. Any further questions? Uh, Councillor Howard, your statement. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and, and an important financial tool that we have, no doubt. And as we've heard in recent weeks, um, you know, we're running short of some of these. Um, they're, they're running out, and then they do always depend on that that uh, word growth. Um, so I think that what we've got to do is just make sure that we're across everything as best we can and uh, optimising the level uh, that we can um, secure and that those funds are put to good use. So uh, it's a policy that's there. Um, I just look forward to hearing more about that, that higher level potential. Thank you. Councillor Williams, your statement. Thank you. Look, I just... Um, Councillor Howard has said um, it's an important tool um, and yeah, I, I look forward to seeing the um, development contribution policy come to council next year. Thank you. Any other elected members wish to speak? Okay, move as right to reply, Councillor Howard. And nothing further to add, Your Honour. Okay, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against? Carried. Okay, we move to um, item 5.16, Employment Opportunities Policy. Um, I'll move that to over second it. Councillor? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I will take the report as read, but I do want to note for you that uh, this is a legislative requirement under the Local Government Act that we have equal opportunities employment policy. Uh, this has been created by staff, uh, reviewed by Senator Pearson, and comes to you uh, now for adoption by council. It's a council policy, not a staff policy. Any questions? Questions of Sarah. You look likely to yeah. stand down. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, um, it's pretty straightforward. I, um, I endorse that. Second the statement, please, Councillor Vincent. Well, thank you, Mr. Media. I had to go and check for myself that it actually was a, a required policy because to me it didn't fit naturally with our role as governors. We should be concerned about the employment conditions for our staff, but I guess saying that we do have an ultimate uh, oversight of it, and um, not that I would ever question the word of, of our um, Morris. I also rate as an extraordinarily capable um, member of the team. Yeah. So I'm happy to support this. Okay, any other elected members wish to speak? Uh, why not? Can I say a few words, sir? Councillor yeah, Nair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All I'm saying is equal employment opportunity policy is not a new policy. It has been there for decades. It is how we implement it is more important as, as a matter of governance. Um, and I, I guess our role is to look at any areas where somebody complained about it not being in in operation um i, I implore ce to bring those cases so we have whereby we can see whether any tweaks are required in this policy but otherwise this is a policy of diversity inclusion and equal employment um i mean there's nothing against it thank you okay i'm not going to make any further comment all those in favor say aye aye, aye. against aye Carried. Let's say item 5.17 is a decision making over the Christmas New Year period, recess period. 
Um, do I have someone who would move that, please? Oh, hang on, I've got a, I haven't finished this. Sorry, I want to make a slight um, adjustment to this one. I want to add the people in there so we don't have any confusion over the Christmas period. So, um, Alana delegates the power to make urgent decisions on behalf of the council or its committees between the last scheduled meeting in December 223 and the first meeting of, of council or relevant committee in 224, the recess period to any two of either the mayor or deputy mayor and councillor Gordon Lambeth. I want to put in there. Mm -hmm. I'll bring that up on the board. He's a good, good, good man in an emergency. Mr. Lambeth. Civil emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if it's appropriate to speak now, is it? But I'm going to be on call on FPU for C sort of feed for the most. So it's just. Yes. You might be able to get me, I might be on the boat. <laughs> With any luck, I might be the odd day out. I'd be on the wrong side of the cyclone. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, we can uh, we can talk it, read it out, talk to it um, while uh, we, we sort out the paperwork in the background. Um, so my understanding is for A, your one other councillor becomes councillor Lambeth, um, and for B, um, any two period to councillors Rachel Williams and Gordon Lambeth again. Okay, so for clarity, council, uh, the change what well, the mayor's moving is what's in the agenda, except for under A, it's going to be instead of one other councillor, it's councillor Lambeth. Um, and under B, uh, it's instead of any two councillors, it's going to be Councillor Williams and Councillor Lambeth. Could I suggest to the mayor that um, other than those named people who actually moves and seconds this, and I'm happy to move it. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. So. Councillor Vincent's moved it. Who's second it? Howard. Councillor Howard. Councillor Howard. Okay, so who's presenting this? Mr. Mayor, I am. Um, this is a, a repeat uh, performance. Uh, it happens every year. Uh, just a slight tweak as per what the Mayor has recommended, but there's no problems with any of that um, at all. Uh, it is just to enable business to be operated over the Christmas break. We need to. Happy to take questions if there are any. Any questions of C. Maris? Okay, um, you can't stand down, you have to sit. <laughs> okay, move his statement, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I think that um, I, my hope is that, as far as any of those main people is concerned, that they won't have any extra workload over that period and that they get the chance to have a good break. Thank you. Second his statement, Councillor Howard. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ditto. Any other elected members wish to speak? I'll just have a quick word. It's surprising what comes at you sometimes. Last year we had that event at Kaeri Lakes and I got a phone call on Christmas Day because it was looking like something serious was going down. Thank goodness it didn't in the end, but you just never know what's happened, whether it's a weather event or whatever. So it's nice to have people in standby for that sort of thing. Okay, um, move is right to reply, Councillor Vincent. I could recycle that Don Grumpel's again, but we'll leave that in. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. All right, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against, carried. Thank you. Um, what have we got next? 5.18. Meeting calendar for 2024. Um, can I have a, a mover for that, please? I'll move it. Councillor Lambert for second it. And who's presenting this? Kelly Ockwell. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. Okay. okay. Maybe I'm not back. Uh, thank you, Um So I'll take the report as read. Um, this is what our 2024 looks like. 
Um, all of the committee chairs were asked for their input and feedback on the dates um, before putting this together. Uh, amendments were made where possible. Um, this is where we've landed. So, if there are any questions. Councillor Lambeth. I'm really concerned about the um, second or third week in March. I think that's typically I think three big meetings like that, one out of town. Um, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned about that. That's a 19, 20, 21st. Um, these three, um, these three days um, dominated by full, full council days is, is very, very testing um, and we have a couple of weeks. So I'm just wondering whether there could be an amendment made to some of those dates on the whether bumping one a week back or a week forward. All, there are other periods of, of three meetings in a row, but generally they relate to individual um, to committees, but not the whole council as those three are. And really, um, we're sort of expected to attend those, those three in a row. So, can I just clarify which week are you talking about? Um, the third week in March. Third week in March. Second and a half week, third week of March, 19th, 21st. Great, Mr. Mayor, if I could, um, thank you for the question, uh, Councillor Lambert. Uh, yeah, so, so what the last delegation in there is to make changes. My suggestion is uh, we, we proceed with the approval for this. Uh, there's a delegation in place to make the changes. We'll take your feedback. Uh, that one's pretty simple. I think that's the elected member development day you're talking about. So we could easily make that not a problem. Yeah. 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 So yeah. point taken. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Appreciate that. OK. Any further questions? Okay. Oh, thank you. I presume we, we're going to be sent the appointments. Yes, you will. Yeah, you'll be sent your calendar invites um, in January. Thank you. Sorry, so the chair will probably be doing that um, next week. Oh, thank you. Be prepared for them. Yeah. <laughs> Joy. Some um, one or two have already come through for next early next year. Is that correct? I would think that would be from the regional councils. Oh, I think yeah. from the regional um, committee. Oh, the long term Perhaps plan from... workshop has come through already. Yeah, so it's for... yeah, the one for the 24th of January has yet. Oh, uh, okay. Do we not have a presentation from um, uh, the QV on the 25th? Yes, correct. There's the invitation that's been sent, um, Councillor Vincent, and then we, we agreed the other day to include more information on the financials at that. And then, oh, so that's the one that shows on the. Yeah. We, we can't send the invites out until you approve it. So once you approve it today, then the invites can come out. Yeah, any further questions? Thank you, Kelly. You can stand down. Thank you. Good statement. Uh, thank you for the work that's gone into this. And as CE Maris has indicated, there is room to jiggle about within that. So we have feedback that requires that we have a look at changes of dates. Well, that's ongoing, isn't it? Second statement, Councillor Lambeth. No, I've probably said enough and thing there, but it, well done. It's, it's spread out, except, except for that little one. We'll, we'll get, get around that, I believe. Okay, any other elected members wish to speak? Okay, move us right to reply. I think I've said it all. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against, aye. Carried. Okay, 5.19. Noting the petition to save Kuiper District's climate adaptation program. Um, I'll move that um, the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think this is pretty. Uh, oh, sorry, you need a second. Apologies. Need a second. I'll have a second for that, please. Councillor Pennyora. Councillor Pennyora. Kia ora. Uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor, this is a, this is a fairly simple uh, procedural item. Uh, we didn't we just note and and uh, address the petition at the last council meeting, so we're just literally uh, reporting back, saying that the topic was addressed at the council meeting, and decided, and it's just to close the loop publicly and for transparency's sake, in accordance with our guidelines. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any questions of C. U. Maris in that regard? Okay. Um, A statement. Um, I think you've said it all. It's worth noting. Um, Councillor Paniora. Second of the statement. Um, 
yeah, I'm a, a little bit disappointed that we overlooked it at the last council meeting, given that the, you know they came to present it. Um, but yeah, I guess there was a lot going on that day, and we moved through it pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, really happy to um, acknowledge our community in presenting that. Thank you. Okay, any other elected members wish to speak? Councillor Aaron Wilson. <laughs> That's brilliant. I got everyone correcting you now, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I just I just wanted to acknowledge um, the community that that um, that worked hard um, on this petition, um, that signed the petition, and that came and presented their views um, to council. It's um, it's always very good to have people coming in and speak to us um, using the petition services, um, the the public forum services and all the all the bits and pieces they can to um, have their voices heard um, at council. Um, and I just um, hope they are heard. Thank you. Okay. Um, I need to try to reply. I think I've said it all. Um, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Against, aye. motion carried. Oh, I'm sorry, where are you going? Well, I was just going to quote Mick Jagger, actually. So you can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. So hopefully those people got what they needed. Thank you. Okay, item 6.1. Do I have a mover for that, please? No one wants to move anything. Yeah, I'll move. I'll see you. Councillor Larson, followed by Councillor Howard. Um, welcome, Helen. Sorry, you moved through those last couple much quicker than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Oh, phew, just catch my breath. So I'll take the report as read. Doesn't seem it seems like only five minutes since we were last talking about this topic. Um, that was a very rushed one as well because it was such a long day. So a um, couple of things to point out here. Um, I have I did I have highlighted in here that I'm keen to just change the format, and the frequency of this reporting, uh, because we have had comments comments about what we're including, and we have also been successful in quite a few other applications for external funds. So I want to add in some other, so the focus has always been on the NB funding through the PGF. We've now got multiple sorts of funding that we get, and I just want to make all of that visible. So probably change the format a bit of it so that you have a table in there that talks about the funds. The, the funds that we've been successful for, and also to give you an update on the funding applications that we have out. So change that format a little bit, and then for the projects out that are in the execution phase, to continue to include the status report so that you've got that information. So that's um, so that's one key thing, and I had really hoped that we would know by now if we had been successful in the latest round of funding that we. <laughs> Heard yet. <laughs> they did say in December, but um, yeah, I was really hoping to have known by now. So, but no. So we've got some other funding out there that we're uh, that we're waiting to hear positive news on. Thank you. Any questions of Helen? Yep, Councillor Howard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Helen, very good. Um, look, there's an awful lot of work that goes on on these, and there's uh, I suspect if we added it up, well. They are in the LTP figures, a lot of external funding at the end of the day. I mean, we wouldn't survive without it. Just as, as a matter of background, how many people are permanently resourced in sneaking out whatever, what, what uh, funding there is and, and in doing the applications? Um, so you're, you're doing it? So there's about six or eight of us yep. that all feed in. So whoever's got capacity at the time. So we keep an eye on the funding options that come into us and whoever's got capacity at the time. We have a bit of a group discussion about what we might apply for. And then if the people who are 
the most knowledgeable about those topics have capacity, then they do the applications. Otherwise, it's people like Mel and I will write them and get the information. But it could be across council too. So we've had yep. um, we've had input from from various groups across council as well, the community engagement team and and and, and others for different topics. So we we try to look to whoever's the most knowledgeable for the topic because um, that makes it easy to write. Yep. Um, but otherwise, we yeah. We just pick it up and whoever's got capacity at the time does it. Well, thank you and thank you for all the work. That's a no. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a quick question. Um, it's a good idea to put those applications, but do you also have shot in the dark? Like, you, you know how things are happening now. Uh, luckily enough, we have someone uh, as a minister, and there's opportunity to look or something like provincial growth funding. It, it may be named differently. Um, and do we keep some projects ready uh, for the minister? Uh, learning from the ropes, they are looking for ideas and they have the money in the pocket. Or do we just wait for the processes when they ask for application? Or do we so, do a lit little bit of, sorry, um, foresight kind of thing? You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Okay, so through through the chair, we um, we keep it what we call an activity plan, which is like our pipeline of all the projects that we want to see happen. When they get assigned to an LTP or an annual plan, that's it's noted as such. Um, but we have others that are not successful through that process because there's always a line that you have to draw based on funding. So we do have some projects that may not be shovel ready, but their the problem statement is known and potential solutions are known. So we have projects that we can pick up and and develop pretty quickly. Uh, the other part of what we do is that we, it, the answer to your question, Councillor Mayor, often depends on the criteria of the funding option that's put in front of us. So, like we've talked about with TIF funding, if it's in the LTP or the annual plan, we can't apply for TIF. Okay. Thank, thank you. The stuff that we're currently applying for is, has to be recovery related. So, there are actually existing projects that are already in our plan that we've been able to get external funding for. Thank you again. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Anyone else would like to ask a question? Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hi. Just um just a question about the Kaihu Valley Trail. Um, if, if you are able to answer. So we've got like a little bit of money left in the budget, and we're still trying to um sort out that um route along Station Road. Yeah. Um, is that like will that use up the rest? Of, like, there's obviously no there's no budget left, obviously, for constructing any trail. I guess my question is, what is that budget going on? Okay, so, so that budget was intended to work on that solution with the, for the station road piece. Yeah. Because of the the length of time it's taking us to work through that with the Marae, um, we're actually talking to NB about using that money to, and yeah, I'm going to get confused now because I re read this report to that this morning again to refresh my memory, and yesterday I was putting the new reports out for review by MB. Um, we're, we're talking to MB about uh, transferring that money to actually fix a piece up by Mamaranui. Okay. Which is often because it's part of a race, so it's been muddy and all the rest of it. So we talked about doing some tree clearance and fixing that piece up with the remaining funds because we're time limited on it and then putting the station road piece into stage two. Okay, so um, just in addition to that information you've provided, the maintenance of the trail, mm -hmm. how is that, is that under Council's usual maintenance now? Because there hasn't been a lot of maintenance being done. Yeah, so the NTA have accepted responsibility for that maintenance and it will now be part of, it will now be part of their maintenance work. Okay. Routine maintenance work. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for Ellen? Thank you very much, Ellen. Okay. Go to the mover's statement, Councillor Larson. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I think it's really uh, good to keep tabs on all these projects. There's significant money, significant public interest, and significant benefit to the district from all of this. I think if we keep, keep focused on it, we might keep our minds also focused on finding new opportunities. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Howard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think it's basically all been said, except I would add that there is um, much to cherish in the work that the team does in, in, in finding these funds. Um, and I think that we should never, ever 
um, lose sight of the opportunities that prevail when these come through to uh, give ourselves, uh, we won't give ourselves bouquets, but at least promote it in the best positive, most positive possible manner uh, to our community. Um, the work that goes on to, to achieve these is huge. And uh, I think that it's always being noted. Okay, thank you. Any other elected members wish to speak? Councillor Aaron Rawson Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to um, um, Helen the um, reports and for the foresight to bring us um, further information of other externally funded projects. So we are seeing that all in the same bucket as such, um, because it is, yeah, as has been said, it's really important that we're keeping our, our um, eye on these projects. It's been it's been an interesting journey seeing them from the beginning of the PGF funding all the way through um, to now, and it would be good to see those other funded pro externally funded projects um, in the same format. Thank you. Councillor Naya. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I hope uh, someone from the um, ministry is listening to this or uh, looking at this video because a lot of promises have been made to Kaipara um, in the manifestos, and I guess this is the time for them to deliver uh, to Kaipara, uh, and we'll take it all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other elected members wish to speak? Okay, move us right to reply. Councillor Larson. Nothing further. Thank you. Okay, put it for the vote. All those in favour, so aye. Aye. Against, carried. Thank you. Can I have a mover? I'll move to move into publicly excluded. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Howard. All those in favour, say aye. Aye. Against, carried. Right. One minute there, Mr. Mayor, and we will uh, thank you. Yeah. Good 